beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed
let's bless his name everywhere Lord Jesus we love you we honor you we thank you we thank you we thank you thank him for the privilege of access to his wisdom thank you Lord for access to your wisdom thank you for the presence of your spirit we bless you we bless you for you are God alone from before time began you are on your throne you are God one more time say you are God alone from before time began you are on your throne sing it one more time you are God alone from before time began you are on your throne for the last time now you are God alone from before time that you are God alone you are worthy of every praise and every adoration that we bring forth to you from this place Lord we pray that you forever remain the priority of our heart I pray oh God tonight that you will open our eyes again you will bless us let your word come with power let there be miracles signs and wonders tonight in the name of jesus christ amen and amen let's appreciate the worship team god bless you please greet one another and be seated good evening everybody hallelujah how was your day excited about what I'm about to teach because I am a believer in the power of the Word of God not just in the power of the Word but its ability to do what it says it will do are we together all through scripture every time people did not get the required results in searching for what went wrong the word of God was never to be blamed are we together yes the word of God has been proven to be consistent and if we apply our hearts to that word the Bible declares that there shall be a performance so I want your heart to be expectant tonight don't be careless about this or any other meeting the presence of God is very special to me and um, when people trivialize the presence of God I'm not only sad I am shocked because I have learned by experience the richness of God's presence five minutes in his presence can give you something a lifetime will not give you I know most times people think we just say these things just for the sake of it but it is true it is true I have learned the valuable lesson of making the presence of God a priority wonderful testimonies great things he's doing but these are not the deeds of a man in his presence there are many things in his presence the grace the empowerment that you need is there too in his presence his wisdom is there you will always find the wisdom of God where his presence is you will not find the wisdom of God in a library you will not find the wisdom of God in in some kind of socialist gathering the wisdom of God resides where he is he is the fountain of wisdom and it is in his light that we see light 
Are we together? His power is in his presence. The very factor that is responsible for God's dimension of results is found in his presence. Without his presence, there is no other agency of fabricating his kind of results. You can get some kind of results, but not his results. In his presence, there is a possibility for restoration. What a powerful, powerful revelation. That it doesn't matter what has happened in my life and your life. When we come into God's presence, all of a sudden a possibility exists. That realities can be turned again in our favor. In his presence, there is deliverance. Separation from spirits, influences and factors that can limit us is called deliverance. Deliverance is not just separation from spirits alone. Separation from information is called deliverance. Wrong information. Separation from negative factors. Separation from negative perceptions. Transformation, renewal is also deliverance. Are we together? In his presence, your faith is lifted. What is your faith? Your ability to believe God, to be convicted about his ability and to act in light of that understanding it is only the presence of god that can guarantee access to faith from morning till this time we've had enough informations to dampen your faith and rubbish everything you know about god you've probably heard reports of people who have died you've probably seen people sick oppressed and all of that and those things have a way of beclouding our presence the psalmist knew the value of the presence of God. Listen. You don't, you don't just say you have attended a service just because you came and sat down and you were the witness of a program. If nothing entered you, you didn't come to church. I hope you know that. Because church is not the place. There are certain things that must make a meeting become that place of encounter. And one of it is your ability to receive something you never knew or that something be activated in you. So please don't just come and sit down just as a, you know that coming to the house of God can be addictive. So you can be carried away that because I am addicted, I have incorporated coming for koinonia as part of my lifestyle. You can convince yourself that regular visitation is equal to transformation. No. Hallelujah. I value his presence. I have gotten more from his presence than I've gotten from any other place and any other person. Believe me when I tell you this. My foolishness was eroded when I came to his presence. My faith was built when I came to his presence. Something culture could not do for me. No uncle ever gave me anything his presence has given me. No educational institution, no counseling or advice ever gave me what his presence gave me. So I will dwell in the presence of the Lord and abide under the shadow of his Sing, I will dwell. I will dwell. In the presence of the Lord And abide Under the shadow of His Listen, they carried the rod of a man called Aaron No root Nothing should grow when it's not connected to the earth It's a law But in the presence of God, rules changed overnight And so fast you took a rod that is lifeless Growth must always be in connection to the earth. If the earth is not involved, growth should not happen. Yet in the presence of God, a rod overnight budded. You see that? Possibilities happening in his presence. That one person can sit down quietly and at the end of this meeting, you are carrying a level of grace you cannot even account for. How did it come? The word of God is coming and then your eyes is opening. Not just like illumination, real visions being opened. 
all of a sudden you are sitting down maybe in any of the overflows or listening and faith enters your spirit and you say this is it i found my key listen let me tell you you must know the word that is spoken and the word you have found they are not the same they are not the same a word can be declared the word can be declared but there is a word that you find your eyes is looking for something lord thank you for all the words that apostle is bringing but there is a sent word i'm searching for it the bible says if you seek her talking about wisdom you don't get you don't get wisdom just by being careless sitting around and hoping it will come you search it like someone looking for something that is missing lord what is the word for the anointing upon my life what is the word what is the word and all of a sudden it may be in one example there it comes your word not a corporate word a rima revealed word to you you will see something no one has seen and you will stand up on the strength of that the bible says man shall not live listen carefully by bread alone physical things man shall not live by certificates alone man shall not live just by human connections alone but you will live by the revealed word that proceeds not just the one you read in the bible there is a word you read from the bible but there is a word that proceeds from the mouth of the lord you can read your bible but it's the one he speaks to you through it he says the lord appeared again to samuel in shiloh by his word an appearance by his word so please don't be careless i can know whether the word of god is working in your life i can know whether all you've been receiving is scriptures or the revealed word let me tell you if it is the revealed word it will rubbish darkness in your life believe me so let's not just come and sit tonight and then here and let me what new mystery what new dimension no father send something send something let there be a consolation to my christian experience that you are alive don't say it doesn't matter jesus caused the fig tree for not being fruitful it was taken from the earth and if you take from the resources of the earth something is expected to be produced from it are we together if your life does not bear fruit you will be frustrated in your christian experience i guarantee you don't mind people who say it doesn't matter it does matter if your life does not bear fruit in fact if it does not bear fruit 15 verse 8 of john says herein is our father glorified herein is our father glorified when you bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples you see that what do we find in his presence distribution of graces this is one thing i want you to always be aware of all that happens to you is not what your ears is hearing grace the grace of god is a living thing it's alive it's not oil no there is an unction it can talk it can teach so as the word of god is coming with every point there is a grace not all of it may be applicable for you but let me tell you if you find the grace for you i give you a guarantee that grace will force like a demon spirit forces a human being to manifest its characteristic that anointing will force you to produce results that is consistent with the career of it if the healing anointing comes upon you it has nothing to do with whether you want to heal or not that anointing will alter you until that anointing can flow through you there's something we teach i think in geography or agric um called um tropic movements you see that that certain plants can tilt towards the sun we call it phototropism it doesn't matter the the plant will be forced by a law to find where sun is and grow towards that direction when you put a fence it's called geotropism it will break and push and go down that's what the anointing does your own is to pray that the real anointing comes truly let me tell you if the grace for wealth truly comes I know there is a place for intelligence but brothers and sisters the assignment of the anointing is to force your body to allow it produce 
so i can know what grace is on you by the result it produces a woman is a woman because of many factors among them the ability to conceive a man cannot conceive if you conceive as a man either the holy ghost helped you or you are lying please pay attention distribution of graces i want you to always imagine when we come for koinonia imagine that there is a cloud this is how i want you to be the bible says they were baptized into moses did moses ever carry water and pour on their head as the word is sent there is an unction this is what you must look out for there is an unction this unction you must understand it it is that factor that makes the word work it's not just i got it you write nonsense and get up and your life does not produce there must be proof of your listening it's not just this year alone it's not just this year your life is at the mercy of which grace is working very simple there's no sentiments about it if the required grace is not there no matter what you do in the flesh it will never produce that result listen let me tell you this if i claim that the wisdom of god is working in my life and that that wisdom did not come by that grace the spirit of wisdom no matter how you try everyone will know this is sophia human wisdom when the wisdom of god comes upon an old uneducated woman you will see the lapse in her unrenewedness but you will still see the result happen regardless of the limitation are we together people of god please i want i i beg you let's take our destiny serious and not just daily dull and play games and waste our time and be frustrated and say lord why is this thing not entering me listen let me tell you this paul called himself a wise master builder you see when you are listening to a man you have perceived the hand of god upon his life listen with an open heart don't come to change the equation when you've not gotten any result it's pride when i listen to people who have results i don't listen to alter the equation don't trivialize results it's more than you see there are dynamics happening it's not just about what you hear there is a grace many of us forget the grace dimension so we just focus on the information and at the end of it you are enlightened but not empowered you need both it takes enlightenment and empowerment not just enlightenment alone enlightenment prepares your mind to cooperate with the anointing but it is empowerment that is the factor for the results cunningly devised fables enlighten but they don't empower anointings and impartations alone empower but their operation is limited because your mind has not been been transited through transformation to align well to get the best of the anointing it is always a cooperation of light and that empowerment please pray one minute and say lord change my life today show me something change my life outside pray everywhere pray there has to be a way there has to be a way around my spiritual growth lord there has to be a way i admit i may not know the way now but there has to be a way the bible says there is a path which no fowl has seen the whelps of the lion has not gotten there if it is not working for you it doesn't mean it does not work or it cannot work please pray show me something oh god tonight that will be worth my sacrifice here open my eyes to a reality tonight that will be worth the commitment the investment hallelujah praise the lord 
please sit down let me just tell you a little story before i start teaching something very interesting happened today usually these things happen and they've happened for a few messages what i have no business sharing what i'm supposed to be sharing today i prepared something it's been in my heart and i've been waiting for god to allow me share it but i just decided to take out some time to lie down and rest i wasn't even sleeping i just put my head and i was facing my pillow and i just saw the theme like you write on a pillow that's it that's how i just saw it and i said wow this was around what time afternoon i just had to get up settle down plan to look at it and this was what i saw the lifter of men that's the statement that i saw i just laid down quietly and the hand of the lord came when his presence comes you will know hmm. tonight's message i i i believe that there is an unusual a strange grace that will come when i saw it please help them ah, my God. the lifter of men yes he is there is a name he is called the lifter of men let's pray in tongues for a few minutes Please make sure you are praying. Don't worry about what is happening to your table. Alabaka prakato salabari ada balada balada balada. sit down if you can be sensitive to the impartations that happen it's been my personal cry to God that every time I teach the grace component this is this is the secret this is the secret of results when the anointing behind the word backs up the word and enters you it must produce what the word says it's possible for the word to come without the anointing but when both of them come believe me it must produce the lifter of men let's discuss please sit down 
<laughs> I believe that the Lord wants to unveil to us tonight the spiritual pathway to greatness there is a pathway to greatness undeniable please help those under the anointing undeniable ah, I'm telling you I sense a strong anointing very strong anointing very strong impartation I just pray that we'll be able to teach that grace is what will make you return with a testimony yes when the anointing comes on you don't just think maybe it's coming okay i'm anointed no when the anointing comes on you you should rejoice because you should know that with that grace then a testimony is guaranteed that's how god answers prayers by supplying the grace the anointing the anointing the anointing does not make the difference it is the difference Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That a man can be weak and small today, but something can happen to that man and turn his seed into an oak tree. That someone can be small. Brothers and sisters, please hear me. Whether in ministry, whether in business, that something can happen to joshua selman can happen to anybody right where you are not you don't he has nothing to do with geography that a system of the kingdom look at the mystery of a seed you pick a little seed even a monster seed plant it in the earth expose it to a system and all of a sudden regardless of gravity regardless of whatever that seed sprouts who says you must remain at this level forever in the kingdom growth is a possibility in the kingdom men can start small but it's a cost to end small in the kingdom spiritually you can start small in the anointing you can start small in prophecy in visions you can start small but that you must ascend a dimension in the spirit where you are weighty the word is weight weight capacity capacity you can start small financially but God can give you weight weight in this kingdom you can start small ministerially you can start small in the gift of the spirit the issue is not the smallness no matter how big or small a seed is a seed is a seed because it will still die but if that seed does die then it will now begin to reveal the potentials there please sit down help us Holy Spirit help us help us help us help us I love the way I love the way God helps us in this ministry I'm an organized person but not at the expense of the wisdom of the Spirit when his wisdom comes that's it regardless of what it is and let me tell you you've heard me say there are not many sermons that God shows me like that and you follow every sermon that I tell you God revealed certain things to me you see the impact on those who believe it and receive it the lifter of men please sit down I believe it's one of the signs and wonders that the Lord wants to do in this season to just lift men like that and use their lifting to prove to principalities and powers that I am still God that you have concluded about a sister and a brother a family based on whatever parameters let me tell you something with God when God wants to lift men he doesn't discuss it with anybody this is God God can lift somebody who was a drunkard yesterday regardless of what you think I thank God because he does not consult my enemies to lift me if God had to consult the wicked to lift me they would say because of my father's mistake I will not rise if God were to consult me maybe my tribe would be a disadvantage someone will come and say no this guy is from the north he should not be doing ministry at a global level 
maybe someone would have come to use all kinds of parameters but god the lifter of men he said jacob have i loved esau have i hated it's as simple as that i am the god of the universe i can lift whomsoever i choose that's what god has chosen to do with this ministry that's what god has chosen to do with my life god can choose to lift men at my level as a human being i can choose to lift men in whatever capacity i can someone can sit down and say i choose to give you admission it's within his power another person can stand up and say i choose to pay your rent i choose to give you a lift men and god can say i choose to lift you i choose to open your ministry to a horizon you have never seen i choose to wipe the tears of your family in one week and say no lord my plan was for one year and god says this is god talking it is one week i have chosen please sit down let's see how god will help us tonight the waters have been stirred the waters have been stirred god does these things that men will fear him lifting in the kingdom is a mystery and a system it can be studied every single person in the kingdom please sit down if you can every single person in the kingdom desires growth desires greatness greatness is not a carnal word are we together now greatness is not a demonic word greatness is not a word for unbelieving people greatness is a kingdom language are we together now it's a system where god enlarges you in influence and capacity where he makes you a voice so that you can legislate on his behalf greatness is god's desire god is an enlarger he can expand the coast of men he did it for jabez he did it for the nation of israel he can expand people the very system of the growth of a plant as a plant grows it doesn't remain at the same length or breadth it expands so with growth should come greatness with growth should come increase i'm going to do my discussion tonight in threefold and i'll be very fast wherever we stop tonight we will just pray and then we can continue next week i decided to break it into three dimensions listen very carefully the lifter of men i want to share with you the kingdom system of lifting many of you by this teaching i believe you will find in this roadmap this compass where you are for many of you tonight's teaching will minister hope for many of you tonight's teaching will supply the staying power to continue for many of you tonight's teaching will lead to repentance a realignment because you find out that the path you are taking is not going to lead you there for many of us what you need in tonight's teaching is the grace to continue and for many of us what you need to learn tonight is thanksgiving because you will find out that your prayers have already been answered are we together the first dimension we are going to look at in the lifting of men is what i call the journey of faith write it down and let's discuss the journey of faith there is a system with which god lifts men in the kingdom in as much as he lifts men instantaneously the pathway that pathway to greatness there is a spiritual science there is a technology it can be learned are we together hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 let's start off with it tonight the bible says for without faith listen carefully for without faith it is impossible to please him for he listen carefully he that cometh to god must not may it's not a choice must believe two things one that he exists the journey to greatness starts with the journey of faith coming to a point of persuasion about the reality of god the bible says that in that journey of faith the first encounter you need 
is an encounter that furnishes the reality of the God you are dealing with listen carefully one of the things that the body of Christ must learn when believers get born again get filled with the Holy Spirit they need to be taught how to live by faith please write it down this kingdom operates by faith this kingdom operates by faith everything in this kingdom is faith dependent you cannot do business with God when you are still in doubt of the reality of his person not his power that he exists I'm showing you the, the way God guides people the Holy Spirit the journey of faith encapsulates everything the systems that the Holy Spirit brings you into so that you can have encounters and conviction you don't become no great man is in doubt of what his his persuasions that is something you must settle before you get to certain dimensions because the challenges that are before you will require strong conviction about the person of god are we together the bible says whosoever comes to god must believe that he is you will think it's a simple statement until challenges stand before you and you will find out that for the first time you are joining the mindset of an atheist to doubt is god really alive there is there is there are certain giants that you face on the mountain brothers and sisters if you have not settled the reality of god you will doubt ask john the baptist you will think just because john the baptist ordained jesus the reality of his godhead the reality of his person had been furnished in john when john was frustrated to a point where his human weakness was at his prime john sent somebody he said go and ask him are you the messiah how about john you ordained me into ministry john said with what is happening now no if you were god you are too mighty to leave me in the prison go and ask him oh i'm no longer sure jesus had to tell the disciples when things started going bad he said who do men say that i am and he said who do you say you would think that that was an easy question nobody could answer don't assume you know god because your knowledge of god is what will strengthen you is what will make you stand and say i'm not going back that mountain i was climbing many believers in church think knowing god is singing christian songs they think knowing god is praying in tongues just because you are saying bah, 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 you are just praying say i know god or knowing god is an election i am elder this i am pastor this i am apostle this do you know god of course i do let me ask you that same question do you know god <laughs> you will be surprised that you are shocked now you may not honestly be able to answer that question do you know God do you know God the Bible says whoever must come must believe that he exists there's something called a pray fool you know what a pray fool is a pray fool is an attempt to play games with your mind is that true sometimes can be expensive so they can tell you something like pastor alpha an alert has just come for you whereas it's not true that's how many people think god is and situations and circumstances can push you to a point where you believe god has calmed you read the frustrations of david in the book of psalms many times david would talk as though he was not born again many believers would say about david david no brothers and sisters if we are honest the pressures of life can change your perception in a way that even you you have to ask god for forgiveness are we together ask a woman who has been barren for 22 years no child ask a woman who has been serving in the house of god for 22 years no child ask her is there god and you see her cry and say don't ever ask me that question again she's serving god 
but she does not want to confront it because confronting it will bring anger where is that god for 22 years where was he when i was fasting where was he when i was praying don't be too quick to assume you know god i'm not saying have you received zoe i'm not in doubt of that the encounter that gives men stamina unto death are we together when they caught jesus the disciples believed that jesus will do all that he is known for again and jesus gave himself freely they ran away why did they run away they didn't run away just because they ran away because they felt cheated you can know it because they ran back to their fishing what a stupid man you've wasted our time you proposed to us that we we're going to be mighty men my mother even liars sitting at my right and left and now look the nonsense you have made out of my life i go a fishing and the other disciples say we go with you and suddenly jesus appears little children have you any catch and they were looking who is that and when they discerned it was the master the bible says peter washed himself and ran and came and jesus looked at him simon bajona lovest me thou more than this lovest thou me more than this and he said well lord i do feed my lamb he began to talk with him and you would think after that one jesus said, okay guys thank you the bible says in acts chapter one for 40 days jesus remained with the people and was teaching them on the matters of the kingdom and afterwards he left and the holy ghost came brothers and sisters do you know miracles don't make you know god they can help your faith many people saw lazarus raised from the dead but it did not make them know god the presence of miracles are not enough the only entity that is capable of helping men know god is the holy ghost there is no amount of education and bible study that can help you know god no the knowledge of god is a reality that only the holy ghost is able to help men the lifter of men follow me carefully so the, the starting point of a believer's journey to a realm of greatness brothers and sisters hear me carefully is the journey of faith coming to a point where you are persuaded beyond beyond manipulation that god is alive you have come to a point where your results are too small to prove or declare otherwise the reality of god you have come to a point where even when you are drinking gary no sugar you don't just say god where are you you don't know him are we together there is an encounter i've taught you what an encounter is an encounter is a supernatural experience that makes the a reality real to you it furnishes the reality of a person or a thing to you i have touched this gentleman i have felt his arms i can't deny if you say oh you touched a bag of rice you are not going to tell me i touched a bag of rice because i've touched rice too i've touched a human being this is not rice this is a human being so no matter how you try to manipulate me there is a level of certainty everyone say the journey of faith <laughs> the bible declares in romans chapter 1 verse 17 galatians 3 11 hebrews 10 38 that the just shall live by faith not the just shall get by faith the just the template for the life of the just in this kingdom is faith everybody say faith your persuasion your persuasion about who god is not what he can do bible faith starts from a revelation of who god is it is only when you know who he is that you can believe what he can do many of us jump the encounter of who god is and we just go straight to what he can do must believe that he is and then when you are done believing that he is then that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek 
eat no seek power now that you know he exists when you seek him passionately there is a reward for it the just brothers and sisters shall live by faith are we together now and you see the system of faith is such that except there is a word there cannot be faith even if you encounter a person it only produces conviction there cannot be faith because faith is an action word an action only happens when a word has come either to instruct you or give you something to do john i mean matthew chapter 4 and verse 4 says man shall not live by bread alone this is jesus speaking responding to satan but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of the god you have encountered man shall not live by bread alone but by every rima the revealed word that proceeds in this kingdom we live by the word of god we live by the speakings of god not just scripture not just verses not just chapters we don't live by verses we don't live by chapters we live by the speakings of the word the chapters and the verses are only containers they are not the word they carry the word the breath of the spirit opening those chapters and verses you see listen the message behind a chapter is the word of god not the story the message you may have been reading scripture but the message in the scripture is where the word of god is because that's where your instructions are hinged upon are we together now the journey of faith many people never become great in this life because their cultural experiences are greater than the revelation of who god is did you know that every time satan wants to destroy you wants to limit your mind he uses the information that is already in your mind he doesn't bring an information outside there is a reality in your mind so he calls you and he says i hope you are aware that you are from this state and you say i remember the information i've gathered about that state is that people don't prosper and satan says that's exactly what i'm saying and it is that raw material he begins to push you are you aware that you read hausa or you read french and are you aware that in nigeria if you study some of these things you may not have an opportunity for a good job you say yes i'm aware satan uses the content of your environmental conditioning as the platform to limit you from believing god listen brothers and sisters please hear me especially if you are in ministry or going or going into ministry spend as much time as you can having encounters with god you will drink from that fountain for life if that fountain dead dries before you get to the promised land you may not arrive there are things today that will never shake me because there is a solid encounter about who god is listen if you don't know who god is you will never stand well because all kinds of things will come to derail you you know how many pieces of papers people have passed to my life in the name of prophecy you know how many kinds of things you know how many dreams and visions people send to my phone apostle i saw something god is going to destroy you next week you don't know god you will die like a chicken because of the conviction of a man someone just gets up and looks at you and says god is going to destroy your family we found out that your grandfather was a wizard and, they, and you now go back and believe is because you don't know who God is when you really know who God is you will learn in your knowledge of God that the Lord is gracious and compassionate he is slow to anger and rich in love the knowledge of God is what strengthens your conviction about operating in the kingdom David knew God what a man David knew God God gave him an option. Should I give you over to your enemies or to you? David said, no, 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 no. God, at least me and you, with these men, they are wicked. But you are compassionate. What has your not knowing God cost you in life? Impatience. Not knowing God. And not knowing how he operates. 
has destroyed a lot of people they call light darkness and they call darkness light he that cometh unto God must believe the first thing the Lord began to do in my life brothers and sisters is not to give me anointing it's not to give money it is always the journey of faith by faith by faith by faith Lord how will this destiny be built by faith Lord I'm an orphan my father is dead my mother is dead and God says you must learn how we operate in this kingdom it is by faith what does that mean by my word if I speak to you notice that my power follows my word so if I speak to you you must learn to trace the direction of my power by looking for where my word is anywhere my word is not stop looking for my power there if you find power there is divination my power follows my word if I say I will lift you then you stay at that area of the world that's where the anointing will meet you the anointing follows what God said the anointing has no business doing anything God has not said you can know where the anointing is by finding out what has God said if God said I will exalt you don't look for the anointing for any other thing the anointing for exaltation will remain until that word comes to pass then returns back to God as a messenger job done then he will say something again then the anointing will start looking for it the anointing does not just move at random the anointing backs up the word so the issue is not where is the anointing the issue is what has God said are you getting what I'm saying many believers let me tell you why we don't get miracles we roam around around areas and zones where God has not said anything and we keep crying for anointing to come and the Holy Ghost tells you this kingdom is a faith kingdom you don't just cry for anointing to come you cry for his word send your word oh God and the anointing follows that word you want to build a ministry what did God say nothing so you just carve out a ministry Lord you must anoint this ministry the anointing said no way I don't work that way I walk I respect the word spoken notice Satan does not fight anointing he fights the word because he knows that the word has the word like like when President Buhari comes to Zaria you don't need to bring El Rufai El Rufai will necessarily be part of that entourage that's how it works many believers don't pay attention to find out what God is saying we pay attention reading the Bible we pay attention reading devotionals which is good but to be able to understand what God is saying look, notice that the secrets of the success of people they didn't walk by faith just by reading the Bible at random they walk by faith by staying to hear we are going to fight oh God what is your what what is your word and God says I will give you victory they say guys let's rejoice victory would be guaranteed If you don't live by faith you will end where your parents ended it takes faith to transit you let me tell you waiting for somebody to give you a guarantee of job after school is foolishness it will never happen everybody you see that has risen to any point of greatness in the kingdom did so by faith the reason why many of us don't get results is that our faith is not in God our faith is in men auxiliary support systems my uncle is a senator in Ibadan my uncle is a senator in Uyo I my uncle is coming out for presidency next year and so when you say those things and pride in them and say no I can't fail and the Bible says woe to any man who puts his strength in a man the greatest of any man can fail you so God begins to teach you son I want you to be great that's the promised land but this journey is going to be by faith and he said Lord at the point of this journey i just have one gideon's international one bible no revelation no wisdom god says don't worry all i need you to do follow where my word is and you will get there follow my word follow my word follow my word so when you open the bible all you do is to just read oh i will bless you mm. When you read it, 
read it like the will of a man to you many people read the bible like god speaking to the disciples i have a personalized bible it was a gift that was sent to me years ago everywhere they wrote the name of anybody for good they changed it to joshua selman the whole bible i don't use it now but it's a powerful revelation so thus saith the lord too you see it written there joshua selman fear not i have redeemed you and he's speaking to me now i have called you by name fear not fear not that means the anointing for courage is somewhere because god has spoken to me are you seeing now you can know what anointing is there don't you see how the anointing moves in koinonia when the word comes the grace for it is what comes god healed blind Bartimaeus. he did not become a rich man his cry his demand was to be healed god spoke to him in the area of healing the anointing that came was for healing blind Bartimaeus never prospered just because god spoke healing no. it is the word that comes to you that controls the anointing that follows you god called benihin into the healing ministry there are many auxiliary graces but the strongest grace that operates is the grace that came with that word for as long as that word remains on him that grace remains on him are we together yes pastor if i come to your house and you ask your wife to go and bring minerals for me you gave a word the performance will be in the area of where minerals your wife will not go and carry your shoe you can still give me your shoe but you chose to give me minerals because that's what you saw that will minister to me more and you say wife go and bring mineral she will go to the kitchen or wherever they keep the minerals and carry it and bring it the performance was in the direction of the word you see please sit down sir you see that we neglect the word of god yet we want performance many believers including those who study the bible don't take the word of god seriously let me tell you if god has spoken to you and you know he spoke to you die there this is fate these careless things people do around one leg here two weeks later you will never rise like that but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded God you told me I may be the last born in my family but you have assured me that in my father's lifetime they will glorify God I believe you I take you I believe that word your reception of the word the anointing begins to come because you have believed the Bible says who has believed our report it is to that person the arm of the Lord the arm of the Lord is his right hand of power it is who believe the report that sees the right hand not who wants to see the right hand brothers and sisters in this kingdom there is no advantage to your life until the word of god comes to you hear it the word of god is your advantage in life whether the word revealed through illumination from scripture or spoken to your spirit by the holy ghost put together a miracle service at the end of every month lord this is your word yes sir and that journey of faith god guarantees that every time the anointing to make sure that word comes from him see when you train yourself don't you know that it's risky sometimes you hear me talking about people oh there's somebody here the anointing you think i'm just guessing you try it and see whether it happens there is you train yourself you don't say lord let the anointing go there you already know that once the word of god comes the requisite grace will follow it come on now come on now so god comes to a family brothers and sisters where nobody becomes anything and god now speaks a word to that family he sends that word to jacob and intends that that word lights upon israel and god comes to you and says, mary you are a young woman a young virgin but i want to speak to you you will carry that holy thing and mary said really be it unto me and the anointing that will force her womb seed or no seed to take the seed of the word of god the incorruptible seed that abides forever and jesus came 
so the next time you see people doing extraordinary exploits don't say they are lucky they believed they believed lord will you really do this i believe you lord look at me the last person who would have helped me in life just died and god said a human being died but my word is still alive keep going and he said lord school fees is tomorrow i'm in 200 level you spoke to me that i'll become a professor i'm already on my way out and god says no keep your gaze on the word if the word is there be sure the anointing is there god's instrument god's performance factor the anointing every time i travel for ministration i don't know the cases i'm going to see i don't know who is going to come when i come for koinonia when we come for miracle service i don't say go around and find out the cases and write let me be sure you know that god sent a word and you know that the anointing is following it let me tell you if god speaks a word to your finances then keep going the journey in this life is by faith you can be weak sitting down right now and god says you are going to be the overseer of an international ministry you will communicate the purposes of god you say lord but i'm a woman i am weak and god says don't insult me i have sent my word i've sent my word i've sent my word and all of a sudden now do you know it's possible for that person to die without it coming to pass and so just because you didn't engage it you will now say you see god said it the word of god does not work automatically the same way no seed grows automatically there must be a reaction between the seed and the earth the seed has potentials to produce but you keep keep beans or maize take away moisture keep it on in your kitchen after five years you will still see it there but take the same seed do something to it add it to the earth and all of a sudden a tree will come out brothers and sisters when the lord called me there was no human being that said i will support you there was no family meeting that said oh young man we are your uncles and aunties we have decided to come together because we discovered that you will need a suit or oh, look i have an uncle in Ibadan. and he will call you it is by faith I was talking to someone i said i came to zaria with one bag one shoe i don't know how many clothes where did everything come from faith not store faith your destiny will only happen by faith that ministry you have been seeing in the dream you will keep seeing it till jesus comes it is faith that will bring it alive everybody say the journey of faith there is no great man in the kingdom who does not have a testimony of triumph to faith you read about the great men and women that god is using around the world and see the impossible situations that surrounded them kenneth e hagen was born with a heart deformity it took faith to cancel it out david yonggi cho his own limitation and imperfection some of these men were born in nations they were they, they were racist nations and everything and faith faith have you not learned that faith is the victory this is the victory that will give you the house the victory that will give you the child the victory that will turn your wilderness even When the Lord was speaking to me, you were not there. What was the guarantee? Brothers and sisters, everything in life is a risk. The only guarantee in life is faith. God said it. He said it in his word. I have found it. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, Joshua Selman. Hallelujah. They are thoughts of good and not of evil. To bring you a future and an expected end. Lord, you really said this about me? Yes, sir. I said this, son. Lord, you said this about me? Yes, sir. Behold, I give you authority over snakes and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemies. Here's the revelation. And nothing shall by any means he never said nothing shall hurt you nothing shall
buy there are many means with which things hurt people and god said shall buy any means you are that committed to protecting me thank you jesus it was not always rosy but faith keeps you to keep seeing the promised land even if you are inside fire don't let anybody fool you that is from the speakings of god into the promised land no sir the journey is far but once you face you keep your eyes like a flint then i give you a guarantee the dust will rise and settle you will still be standing it is by faith that we rise it is by faith that we reign there are people who came to zaria to school pastor they came to zaria with just a box they they didn't even have admission they just came by faith i would die here today they are lecturers no house there are school of ministry students who have come now some of them came by faith just do you know if you really believe god his integrity will have to come and prove god will not allow your trust in him to be aborted it's too precious listen i'm a man of logic i'm a man of organization but no matter how organized you are in life if you must get to the other side there are times you will get up waiting for a boat you may that boat will come when you are 80 years you will just need to get up and say lord you said i should go to the other side here i come you have to get up and jump in that's why many young men will never build because it takes faith not cement many young men will never rise up and move in life they will never go out of their parents house 40 years they are still there let's take it easy i've applied let me see how jobs will happen in life no sir no sir it's good to be responsible it's good to be as whatever as you can how much money do you have in your account to do ministry you really believe you can have enough it takes faith apostle where will the partners come from apostle if i reach lintel level apostle i wanted to buy a house and they say it's 15 million and all that i have right now is 250 naira that somebody even gave me faith is a currency we purchase things with it in the kingdom lord i believe you where are you sending me to oh god i'm sending you to south africa lord i've never gone out of nigeria son the anointing follows my word if i have spoken to you and i give you the go ahead go there are some of you as you are looking at me god is saying how long will you sit down and not arise to let me stand up for your family god has already told you you are the savior of your family what kind of vision are you waiting for lord what is the next instruction i take on that mantle what is the next instruction what is the next instruction you have told me that i will be great you have said i will not be small lord i've been crying about the class of degree i graduated with and you have come to me in your mercy and you have said you will multiply me i will not be small you will glorify me i will not be few lord i engage let my heart be the earth for the seed to be planted and brothers and sisters you will see this wonder working god who has helped some of us and produce glory out of foolish and stupid things whenever you see great results many of you sit down and think kai this people must be lucky what a lucky businessman what a lucky man of god oh papa Ia Deboye, so lucky ah lucky luck I'm a believer the journey of faith some of you this is where you are with God notice you know where you are by the kind of dealings that come God can sit down and you you say Lord I have only 500 naira and God says give everything there's something he's teaching you it's not all about parting with 500 naira he's teaching you how a day will come he will flex your spiritual muscles whether there is money or not it doesn't affect you he's weaning you from dependence to physical things i've shared with you my story i'm not saying you should do it you do it at his word i have taken trips with zero naira zero naira 
and return back to my destination with zero naira because god said it i remember when i was in area bz i would trek because i would believe now whether it was god i had or not i don't know but i'm not ashamed it's a training process i would sit down and trust god for grace that time no atms no nothing no branches branches don't even connect themselves i would believe that god put money for me in the bank and i would trek from bz to first bank i would join a long queue praying in tongues believing that i will withdraw money i would stand there after hours all of a sudden i would now submit it and the person says, sorry are you expecting some money i'll say yes say, well sorry you need to maybe call the people the money is not there and imagine how heartbroken two hours yet i will look and say lord i give you the glory and god will be silent as if he's not hearing me when god is silent it's not ignorance it's training there's something he's doing to you you need to learn this many of you have been taught that god always talks it's not true god talks but he doesn't always talk when he's training you you keep quiet the journey of faith all of a sudden they transfer something to you and god says carry that ten thousand buy chairs for a church and he said god why are you doing this to me i go to bed in the night and i see the visions of a great destiny i wake up and lord you are humiliating me what is this and god says no i'm teaching you how to trust me i'm teaching you how how will you be great when you don't learn how to trust him how will you be able to give the car and give the house how will you be able to give the word of knowledge among thousands of people when you are afraid when you are still your ego is still on the line how will you be able to stand and say there's somebody in so 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 place you think you can have that courage without training no sir the journey of faith one day god will lead you you are going to have a healing ministry and god will lead you to someone on wheelchair you will know you had god you will lay hands and lay hands and pray and pray and pray and nothing will happen you will call upon god and you will feel like god is bell and at the end of it in shame and embarrassment you will turn to the people and say i'm sorry i i came here full of faith you see that i love god and sometimes you are guilty for the honorarium they give you because nothing happened and you go back and say god why did you do this god will say sit down let's continue <sighs> continue what god will say you passed the test you still came back to me even in your failure it's a sign you will never leave me even when you fail because if you fail you should look for an alternative but god watches you as you fail and you come back and still bring the shame lord i failed they invited me for the meeting i promised them that there will be an impartation and at the end of that meeting i was so disappointed lord who else will i run to and god says come it's a journey of faith is god helping somebody great people never become great until they learn how to take god at his word many of you have not learned to take god as his word if god speaks to you then know that everything will be all right if god tells you your womb will carry a child then brothers and sisters whether or not there is a womb there know that the anointing is going to come and produce a womb because god said so is the lord speaking to us some of you this is the level you are now you are starting with god god is working with you sometimes god will speak do you know god even uses your mistakes to help you there are times you think you had god you had like god said you should go out he will stop you and correct it he can still use it and you come out in the night and say lord i had like you said i should come out and you stand there 10 minutes nothing happens you feel so ashamed and go back and then you say lord was it you or not god says that's not the most important thing the most important thing is you are working on your aptness to act when you perceive that it is me when you are about to fall he will protect you you say not so far my might can keep you but let's continue the training listen walking with god is not about accuracy it's about your commitment to do whatever you know god has the power to stop you from failing we are too conscious of ourselves and our reputation that's why we can never be great 
God can speak to you and say, young man, start a pure water company. And you say, oh God, please don't, don't make a fool out of me. Where I don't even know anything about it. No. I have, except God does not speak to me. There is nothing I will do when God has not spoken. I have learned the excellency of the voice of God. Please learn this tonight. Do not ever be found where the voice of God is not in. No matter what price you must pay to be sure that God is there, pay it. Three days before Koinonia started, I went back for a retreat. I said, Lord, you see the enormity of the work. Please speak to me. If you are not the one and this is not your will, I will cancel this thing now. And God said, no, son, it is me. So if, even if Benny Him calls me today and Papa Iya, Deboya and all the fathers of faith and say, son, we see what you are doing. May the Lord honor you, but um, you are not in the will of God. I will kneel down and appreciate them and say, I respect you as fathers, but give me some time to go back to God. But I know that I had God. Do you know why many of us never stay to the end? We didn't take our time to be sure that it was God. I believe, I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, I believe, I believe, Lord, I believe. In Exodus chapter 3, when God wanted to begin to walk Moses the path of greatness, notice the first thing that happened, an encounter. Moses saw a bush. A, he's standing and tending Jethro, his father in law's sheep. All of a sudden, a voice calls him. And Moses comes and begins a conversation with God. Who are you? Where are you talking from? Because it is on the strength of your encounter. He reveals himself to you. He reveals his words to you. He reveals the potency of that word. And then you can go. Who are you? And then in verse 15, he begins to speak. Moses said, if I go to Pharaoh, at least I know Ra. I know these gods. I have seen similitudes of them as idols. I have heard them talk. And I know, do you know it's because the nation of Israel really did not know God. That's why when they were tired, they said, build us the one we know. Please, leave this your God of Hebrews. Build the God that brought us out of Egypt. Aaron, make sure you build. And they collected all the materials and built a golden calf. Behold, everybody goes to the person you know. And if you don't know God, get ready to go to a harbor list. If you don't know God, get ready to go to a witch doctor or go somewhere. Those who go to these people are not wicked people. They are just people who don't have convictions enough. And God told Moses, he said, Go and tell them that I am has sent you. He said, I am that I am. Moses said, interesting. Which one is that? He said, okay, you are crying for an encounter. Because you can't go and stand before Pharaoh. When you don't know me moses let me reveal myself and after that revelation he said moses take your rod throw it on the ground became a serpent pick it by the tail and then he called it the rod of god he said this rod wherewith you will do signs and he said go moses goes to stand before rameses his half brother who had now become the pharaoh and said thus saith the god of the hebrews let my people go and Ramesses laughed said Moses we played games together for 40 years you have been away I'm sure some poverty has changed your mindset all kinds of bad things have happened to you and he said no I met another personality the God of heaven are you going to listen to me or not he said no through his rod it became a serpent and then Pharaoh laughed and said Moses shame on you this is what you came to threaten me with janice jambas come and show this guy that egypt has grown since he last left and the guys laughed and threw their rods and then all of a sudden a snake swallows another snake does not become fat and then moses picks it up says explain it ah and pharaoh looks 
he couldn't pretend that did not touch him say but i'm still not convinced enough go but he must have slept in the night and said wow janice jambres come what happened where did that matter disintegrate to there is a god of creation revealing himself and after the last plague many of you don't know why pharaoh cried pharaoh did not let them go just because his son died no let me tell you when you study egyptian religion the covenant that they enter with their firstborn sons that will later become pharaoh do you know moses wrote books that are dangerous today because moses was taught something he was covenanted and was taught moses was going to be the next pharaoh it would have been pharaoh moses not Ramesses. so moses was already being prepared and in that state he wrote certain things and those books are still being used in occultism today but he met the god of heaven and changed his life and he came and demonstrated a dimension do you know god already told moses that i will harden pharaoh's heart i hope you know so moses didn't go and say god don't send me again I, i'm tired of this disgrace the information has already been given and he said i will make you a god the word and the anointing to make it happen happened and in the end they came out in a hurry out of egypt because when god says it there is the grace to make it happen great things the lord has spoken of us oh zion is up to us to believe him and know that god does not lie god does not lie god does not lie dear families listen to me i know the things that are happening in your various families but god does not lie you only cry when the book has not been opened you weep when there is no word if the speakings of god has come your direction then wipe your tears wipe your tears listen do you know why david was crying when his son was sick that he had with Bathsheba, he knew if god did not speak that child must die and god knew that if he speaks the child will live so god refrained from talking till the child died if god spoke it would be impossible for that child to die and god kept quiet and when he died david said no problem he got up and washed himself and comforted himself notice how in ancient times people will stay helpless then you will now hear in the seventh month in the fifth day the word of the lord came when the word of the lord comes that's it they watch themselves they stand up and start rejoicing they've not fought oh but they are already calculating how to share the land you this is your own whereas the giants they are sleeping imagine somebody sharing your property when you are still alive because the word already killed you David knew what he was doing when he stood before Goliath. He said, God just gave me bonus to make me a king. Oh, foolish giant. You are a giant and you are not wise. Don't you know it's the word of God that kills and, make a, and makes a lie? The word of God is against you. You are dead. Anything would have killed him. Not just a sling. Anything would have killed him. The word was already backing up everything. And all of a sudden, that guy died. Removed his head lifted it gave it to the birds there are things god has spoken to you go back and open your notebook before the troubles came when you started disbelieving god open the notebook and see what he told you did he not tell you by 2019 you would have entered certain dimensions and it's one year to the time and it doesn't look like it will ever happen brothers and sisters this my god this my god God is truly Jehovah Sharp Sharp. He can wake up overnight, shake himself from his throne and change your life. Yes, sir. Say, my God is able. Please say it. My God is able. Ah, apostle, but it's already been nine years delay. God can give you triplets overnight. Overnight. Overnight compress nine years to nine months healthy all of them will come out and god will say did i not tell you i can make it happen the bible never tells us jesus spent nine years in the nine months in the womb of mary 
there is nowhere in scripture where it was calculation of nine months no we just know that as soon as they left and went to where he could give birth mary gave birth i believe that god allowed that time just so that human beings will not start doing stupid things but i believe mary would have still been pregnant mary would not have that faith to believe that she can be pregnant and give birth to a bouncing baby boy in two weeks and then also because he was subscribing to the law of process so that we may learn jesus grew but there's no record in scripture that it was nine months expect unusual results in your life as you believe god i i cannot get usual results in my life no usual results mean you are scientific unusual results mean there is a finger there is a word upon your life there is a word upon your life expect it expect it unusual results unusual results by the word of god unusual ministry unusual business by the word of god look the testimony the lady shared happy i'm sure many of you didn't believe it that she said she was listening to um um uh, what they call it a message at six percent and i'm sure some of you will go and ask her later confess is it true let me tell you brothers and sisters my phone has almost died i was on the trip i held it it started charging from my hand charging till it finished i know some of you will not believe it something has happened to our generation we have reduced ourselves back from true spirituality to a realm where we are so sensual and carnal we want to calculate how can a happen to b to make it c and god says the word plus anything is equal to what i want the word plus anything that's god's equation the word plus a failure can give birth to a man of god don't sit down and start asking god nonsense please listen we have misused this scripture wisdom is profitable to direct to endorse carnality and depravity of mind ah let's be wise let's be reasonable you keep being reasonable till life closes the door at you this journey is a journey for men and women of faith listen let me tell you the truth there are times you would think you had god but you find out it wasn't God don't be ashamed and let it not stop you from taking action the next time you hear that is God keep making the mistakes till you learn God will protect you with his love and integrity it's not easy for people to just derail like that the sincerity of your heart will compel the mercy of God to guide you don't be afraid of making the mistake that's how you learn I'll be lying if I tell you every hearing God that I think I've had was really him. As I have grown, I found out that, ah, that other time, so it wasn't him. But it still doesn't matter. His grace and his mercy, you exercise yourself unto godliness. The fear of believing God has destroyed many people. I believe him today. If God tells me, tell Emeka, I will bless him. When I say Emeka, he doesn't have to fall down and roll. I have sent the word. If it never happens, it's because he did not engage it. He allowed the seed to be barren. But if Emeka believes that word, like Mary, he may not even know how the thing happens. The same word will now start scouting for the men that will make that word come to pass. Where is your house? In the realm of the spirit, it will take the word of God and you're believing it to make it your experience where are your children where are your well-behaved children not just in your brain in the realm of the spirit it takes faith to bring it where is the property of koinonia where is the headquarters of koinonia it's in the realm of the spirit it will take faith to bring it are we together apostle where is my job I've been eyeing civil defense. Take your eyes from civil defense and look on to Zion. Are we together? You look at civil defense, you'll be disappointed to your, to your own pain. I lift up my eyes onto the hills. Question, from whence cometh my help? He says, my help cometh from the Lord, the maker, not from my father, not from my uncle. He can use them, but my help comes from God. Say after me, my help comes from the Lord. 
so don't get up and start moving around the street like a fugitive like someone who does not have help you move around and say look life self look at the way life is working look at my only shoe look at this don't talk like that the word of god is upon me i may be weak now but the word of god has declared that i'm strong the word of god has declared that gentiles come to my light i believe it in the name of jesus i believe i expect the appearance of gentiles the just shall live by faith let me tell you what will happen to you when many people especially and mistakenly i have noticed a trend that many matured believers are throwing away the reality of walking by faith simply because of higher dimensions of revelation you find somebody saying this now they say ah, ah you are still a baby christian you should have known that god will still do it you will leave the rules you will never get the result you must remain childlike there are times i walk around my room i wake up in the night like a zombie i'm just walking around in the name of jesus joshua selman you are a royal diadem in the hands of the lord the favor of god is upon you koinonia is growing strong by the spirit of the living god lord you spoke to me you declared that this is my year of triumph i will say it is your if i say it's your own year of triumph you can enjoy it and i may never enjoy it i can carry my pride and sit down and by december 31st the fact that the word came through me does not mean it's also not for me that's why i listen to koinonia messages and i receive the prophecies because the word only passes through a man but it is for men are we together the journey of faith are you walking by faith are you speaking by faith are you living by faith apostle i'm only i'm 40 years now as a lady look at me which man will come to marry me what did god tell you god told me a good man is coming to get married to me then stay there stay there and die there and let god apologize to you for lying to you but stay let god apologize to you for lying to you but stay there are you getting what i'm saying i'm teaching you how to walk by faith please don't sit down and be overly scientific and intellectual about your life it won't happen that way it won't happen that way let me tell you something um the lord spoke to me a particular season and said i am bringing a particular number of people to sow into your life and to sow into the ministry when the lord told me i said lord this is your word i believe it do you know i believe the lord and sometimes people will send me recharge card 100 naira i say lord thank you i celebrate your doing you spoke to me i'm seeing a performance you don't just sit down and say lord is he 100 naira you are talking about don't play games with me i'm not a small child no whether it is the fist or a finger is still god so you celebrate it lord if i if i see a finger then there must be a hand if i see a hand there must be a personality thank you for the finger because the hand is coming and i tell you true to god's word true to god's word hallelujah the lord told me through the messages he would send these things all over the teachings all over all around i believed it when he said it i believed it at that time there was no possibility to see this but i believed it right now from taxi drivers to men of god to churches everywhere they say koinonia messages they say kai the guy is lucky he's just intelligent this is not intelligence this is the foolishness of believing god versus his power that responds when men believe him the same way god can speak to you and say dance for one hour and receive your husband say god please don't don't make a fool out of me i'm not i'm not stupid god will say that's my word for you it's not the word for everybody and you will be dancing like a fool for one hour and then the devil will make sure that one mocker comes to knock ah are you okay this one that you are shouting i'm fine what are you doing dancing for what forget it they <laughs> say church 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 is turning people into stupid things you see that they are like that guy 
that told the king in samaria he said that told elisha i said ah, even if god will open the heaven will we be able to do this he said you will see it you will never eat of it hallelujah there is nothing god tells me that i will not believe him i'm not afraid if i find out he's not the one i will say okay god i believe i thought it was you thank god there is restoration in the kingdom so it doesn't make any difference but i will keep flexing my muscles what has god told you that the devil is about to cheat you now and tell you that it was not god what has god told you that the devil is about to tell you oh your family forget all those people can you believe god don't ask how it will happen just say lord i believe you pray in one minute before i take the second session quickly pray lord i believe you you have spoken this concerning me i believe you i believe you pray i lift my voice to you you're the awesome god i lift my voice to you awesome god awesome god i lift my hands to you you're the awesome god i lift my hands to you awesome god The Lord declared unto Abraham that he will be the father of many nations. The Lord declared to Abraham that in thee shall the families of the earth be blessed. Abraham was old, stricken. Sarah was old, stricken. Had passed menopause as it is in the manner of women. But they had faith. He counted him faithful. The Bible says he wavered not at his faith through unbelief unbending unshakable persuasion god may call you to be a prophet and for 10 years you will not see one vision not even one dream stay there lord you said the prophetic office is for me i believe you every word that god has spoken concerning me i write it down and once in a while when you see my notebooks you don't like them because some of them are old but i would never throw them i will use gum sellotape fix them because those things control my destiny do you know when god spoke to me about koinonia 2005 and i pick it and i look at it lord you have done this and that in the name of jesus i trust you this is what will happen one day we will stand like this in koinonia's international headquarters i will remind you i will remind you people say wow this guy is so lucky you mean people like you like that nobody's lucky everybody is faithful you push your faith until you make it happen <sighs> number two we'll stop somewhere and pray the journey of faith is the first number two i title it the track record number two the track record the track record you want to become great in the kingdom you not only trust god enough or alone you must have a track record most people don't know what a track record is in the spirit in the physical there is how they can get information about you is that true because there is a track record they can get have you been involved in any criminal activity have you been involved in this how old are you and they try to check with the police have they filed any case with this with that okay we can allow you go to any nation because you are not associated with any terrorist group there was a track record of being a well-behaved citizen in your country when they bring out your information and they find out in 10 years you were in prison five times are we together now and this happened they would detain you and say no 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 we don't consider this guy healthy to be lifted to that nation that's how it is in the spirit let me tell you something god does not use your past but he uses your track record a track record is is what validates that you are qualified it is still by grace but that qualification is based on capacity track record this is the hardest part 
of the journey to greatness establishing a track record in the spirit a track record of godliness a track record of prayer a track record of fasting a track record of consistency a track record of patience a track record of endurance years ago i saw a gentleman who graduated from nda and i saw his calendar they made a calendar he was well you know in his apparel and they wrote his name whatever it is that they wrote and then under like a caption they just wrote a testimony of endurance testimony because from day one as soon as he entered nda they started kicking him up and down giving him broom to sweep he cried and saw his mother waving him goodbye and now that guy was at the other side of his pain rejoicing with his badge and he sees one civilian who has not been trained try to stop him and he says frog jump quickly let me show you that i have been authorized are we together and the civilian i will beat you and he says there's only one part of your body i can touch and you will die not fall down i was shown in the military camp that men are like machines there is one part of their body you touch they fall down and die you are there bragging because you are big i'm not just wearing uniform for nothing the uniform means i've been given secrets i went through things that's how you come out and the devil looks like you and thinks every young man is just like that i will rubbish you in that place and he says ah, that's what you are doing to me he said, i will do it again and again because i was shown something about you i didn't know you were this weak my staying power there was a track record if you don't have a track record you cannot be committed the true grace of the kingdom first samuel chapter 22 and verse 1 and 2 the bible speaks about david the journey from his exit from saul running away to the throne he was in a cave that the bible identifies as atulam it was a place of dissertation it was a place of rejection the bible says therefore david departed thence and escaped they wanted to kill him but he ran to a cave called adulam and remained there like a fugitive and a vagabond but a man was creating a track record a track record notice in the bible moses left egypt and was in the wilderness a track record the Bible just tells us about Elijah. Elijah the Tishbite. He was not born an adult. There was a track record. Look at John the Baptist. Who came in the spirit and the power of Elijah. He was in the wilderness. Certain things were being taught him there. He was eating locusts and wild honey. Until his season of appearing. What of Jesus? From age 12, ladies and gentlemen. We never hear anything about Jesus again until age 30. 18 years of silence read your bible from age 12 you don't read one thing about jesus again until age 30. what happened for 18 years there are all kinds of theories some postulate that he went to india to go and learn under buddha some postulate that he went to uk i mean all kinds of postulations here and there but one thing i know is that at age 30 whilst john was 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 baptizing people here comes jesus from wherever he had been and he came out and he said behold the lamb do you have the track record many pastors want the loyalty of people without a track record who has tested you has god tested you with money has god tested you with power has god tested you with the anointing has god tested you with failure don't just sit down and expect to have a large church out of nowhere some of these our balloon expectations is why we are disappointed no matter how fiery you are you will not escape the test that creates a track record hmm. let me show you something i found that really blessed me give us hebrews 11 please hebrews 11 and we'll read from verse 24 to 29 hebrews 11 and 24 we're going to pray Hebrews 11, 24 to 29. 24. Read it with me, please. One, two, read. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, adulthood now, refused to be called Pharaoh's, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. 25. Choosing 
hold on choosing how can a man choose affliction choosing rather to suffer affliction so that he can prove that he's on God's side is a choice than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season 26 esteeming the reproach of Christ of Christ's greater riches than the treasures in Egypt for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward we are reading to 29 by faith he forsook Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king for he what endured as seeing him who is invisible through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood lest you know this and that and that and then 29 the Bible says by faith he passed through the Red Sea as by dry land which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned by faith he made a choice how can a man choose to suffer and he says by faith track record you would have bribed and you would have been rich since 2006 but by faith you chose that I will walk in integrity and it costed you some of our parents today would have been multi-millionaires if only they signed one signature they refused to sign that signature and for 20 years they are paying the price it's a track record the realm of the spirit pays attention to your track record is God speaking to us track record when you finish a great meeting and God helps you 30 people in the fellowship and all of a sudden you finish and when you are alone you get down on your knees Lord thank you for the privilege you gave me the privilege to lead these people it's a track record the heavens are witnessing it remember you are the one who is going to be great but God is watching the track record somebody gives you 100 naira another person gives you 1 million God sees how you thank him for two of them you just throw the envelope with 100 naira and say Lord this is money thank you he's watching your heart you bring all of them together and say Lord whether it is 100 naira or it is 10 million I thank you you are the doer he's watching you removing the tithe when no one is supervising you it's a track record many of us do not know that God accredits men that's why you will see certain people you think should rise and God says leave them there you better leave him there leave the people there because God knows what he's seeing koinonia fast and you are inside all of a sudden ah bring me yam add exos bring ketchup and you just eat and belch and then come out with your mouth dry track record one day you will tell one spirit leave and that spirit says you you you, you think that everybody's an idiot There are many men of God that don't give. They say give, but they don't give. There is no track record. Tight. The last time they gave tight was five years ago. No track record. Are we together? You need track record. You need a track record in the realm of the spirit. Somebody gives you a new phone ah this cheap phone five thousand lord is this all you could i prayed for two weeks and god is watching your heart it's a track record a track record of ingratitude you are not ready for the iphone it will never come are we together there are many pastors three members four members and you see them preaching with their heart and loving god do you have transport money there are just five of you would you mind coming to eat in our house since you are five we prepared meals enough and the lord is saying look at him look at this you see him preparing to talk to five people as if he's preaching in a convention and god says that's my son not that you sit down and snore away then one day they are invited says a big church or small say, ah one thousand two you say you mean it ah let's go and buy suto because god is in that church you see those kinds of things is why many people never rise whether I'm counseling what do you know when we round off now and I stand to counsel people I give it the same seriousness because it is someone's destiny 
do you have a track record of trust can God trust you what have you done with what he gave you he gave you a little level of wisdom what have you done with it he gave you a little level of influence what did you do with it he gave you intelligence God never gives you a harvest he gives you a seed and watches your management of it you need a track record and part of establishing that track record may require you going through what I call the furnace of affliction <laughs> you see ba this furnace of affliction you see is not every negative thing that is demonic let me show you something second corinthians please we'll find somewhere to pray second corinthians chapter 12 from verse 8 to 10 please quickly second corinthians chapter 12 from verse 8 to 10 let me show you what happens here the furnace of affliction now let me tell you i don't believe god causes tragedies no he doesn't but i believe god can take advantage of every situation and produce glory out of it watch this the goal before i read this the goal of this season of creating a track record is to reveal to you the weaknesses and the limitations of your human nature outside of the agency of the spirit the goal is to strengthen your dependence on the holy spirit you will see how weak how frail how incapacitated you are as a person outside of the assistance of god dependence on the holy spirit no longer becomes something you do just because you are in ministry you have learned by your passing through the furnace of affliction by your passing through these seasons creating a track record it is seldom um A very painful process I don't think there are exceptions it is at this time that you will pray and pray and pray and nothing will happen yet you can minister to somebody somebody comes for counseling immediately a word will come as soon as you leave them you say God what is this and the heavens look like they're quiet there is a track record this is where men are separated from the boys this is where capacity is built the end product of this track record is called an exchange where his strength swallows up your weakness where you are alive but no longer by your strength you are alive by another agency that is not human now you are ready for the throne now you are ready for glory there is no level of persecution that will shift your faith again you have come to a point where you have gained stature in the spirit don't be afraid of establishing the track record it is painful many times embarrassing discomforting creating a track record in the spirit will sting your ego beyond your imagination endure the pain despise the mockery god is doing something with your life gather your pain and your shame together because you will need them they will strengthen you be careful what you call embarrassment that will be your trophy tomorrow go through the pain track record are we together say track record that one day you can say once upon a time when i started ministry we did not even have 10 naira to buy pure water yet we loved god and god and men can testify do you know listen when you see people become loyal to a man and to the teachings it's not just because you are anointed alone there is a track record are we together you can say oh remember when we used to meet in the rain and there is a human agent that says yes so if somebody now says oh pastors are doing church just for money there will be a system of defense for you because there was a track record someone will say i remember emeka i remember him I remember us having crusade in the rain where we shouldn't do it but he still did it no I testify that this person loves God when it comes to a track record it's not only God that testifies men must testify that there is a track record people want to invite you to a big ministry they will ask questions who knows about this person which other ministries have invited him did you behave well 
did you preach well were you respectful are you somebody who is matured and honoring by that track record a door will be open don't trivialize the passion to create track record you can ruin a great future when you refuse yourself let me tell you track record is a very you create it in a way that most times will be shameful because god will expose you to the eyes of all men they will see everything about you they will see your weaknesses they will see your limitations they will see your mistakes and you'll be saying lord why are you allowing people to see this and god will say so that there will be witnesses when i lift you witnesses there was a reason why god wanted people to see rahab he would have quickly preached to rahab and they would have come to meet a renewed rahab no meet the rahab sitting on the fence as a prostitute so that when i convert her and she becomes the great grandmother of jesus i can by her life show that i can use anybody listen for many years i wondered why the bible sometimes can be vulgar you will see informations that sorry to use the word explicit contents some contents in the when you really read some things in the bible you'll be like kai did god intend for children to read this i just think this is me as a human being lord this information is it really necessary did you have to put it there why will god sometimes god will talk about the dealings of people maybe with women or with some and god can go into remember all scriptures was inspired of the holy ghost it can be so meticulous to capture information that you are like ah, ah god we are adults we already know what you mean do you know why god does that so that the excellency of power may be of god and not of us so that when they see you tomorrow they say ah, ah, is Saul also one of the prophets let me tell you what for you today is shame tomorrow will be your system of defense did you hear what I said yes don't be ashamed everybody knows you are a single dad everybody knows you are a single mom and people look at you when God begins to use you and somebody says are you sure this lady did not do divination somebody will stand up and say I knew how when she could not take care of two children three children yet she loved god creating a track record will force you to be naked before everybody sometimes the judges in your season of track record are your own enemies and god will be the one to keep a chair for them to sit down ah. <laughs> ah. i know you don't like what i'm saying but it's true sometimes they are driving you out of the house with your wife and all of a sudden your sarcastic neighbors are there watching you are saying god but did you have to allow the neighbors to see our shame and god says just watch what i'm doing it's a movie there's part one part two part three part four part four is when you return back with your family in power and glory and you come to greet the neighbors and they say no 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 it's a lie when you see the enemies of a man testifying about god's goodness a track record made it happen why am i telling you this some of you right now listen listen some of you are in the most uncomfortable situations in your life your ego has been stung everything in your life that represents honor seems like it has been taken away from you i bring you a word of hope weep not god is using your life to create a track record lord why will i serve you and be crying and then you make me cry before men so that when you smile they will know the god of heaven took you through this or that because some of you the testimony of your life people will never believe it when they see what god has done they can take it for granted and say you were just lucky and so god will say if it is your church members that see you they can say it is church manipulation but God will allow a non-believing person that you know doesn't lie to see it. And he's the one who will stand up and say, no, I know. There was a reason why Nicodemus came to Jesus by night as a witness. There had to be a witness in the, among the scribes and the Sanhedrin that he was God. Do you know Jesus hung naked? Everybody say a track record. Jesus, the son of the living God, crying should i trust that kind of person 
Jesus, are you that weak? You are in Gethsemane. What business do you have to do with tears? Are you not the one who should wipe tears? And the father kept silent. A track record. Imagine the throne without the cross. Track record. They put a crown of thorn upon his head. You would think that the power of the world should throw them away. But the thorns entered and real blood came out. Track record. They whipped him. 40 stripes save one. Do you know that they did not hang Jesus with a covering? He was naked. The word. Please, Abba Father, talk to us. Have you lost your power? Did somebody vote you out of the throne? And heaven was silent. Here's what Jesus said, Eloi, Eloi. If Jesus didn't say this, we would think that, oh, he was a macho man. Jesus cried in frustration, Eloi, Eloi, Lamak Sabachthani. Father, I, I understand the men forsaking me, but why have you forsaken me? You would have said, Jesus, don't fall our hand. The father was silent. And he said, into your hands, I commend my spirit. Jesus died life died life died when he died he went to hell all the demons were on him their creator they were on him to force him to bow look at the humiliation he went through it was a furnace of affliction but hallelujah when the legal claims of justice were paid the bible says he shook them he made a public show of them and all of a sudden he went to hades the place of the dead and preached to the departed saints and opened the gates and said follow me he had to be the firstborn among them that were resurrected and the bible says jesus resurrected and said all hail i know that i've gone to adulam but now is the time for the manifestation maybe we'll take that one next week no greatness listen this dimension your fasting will never take it away from you believe what i'm telling you master in the you know the millennial kingdom when you come to reign can you grant that my son two of my sons will sit at your left and right jesus didn't say the position is not vacant he said can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism there is a price listen do you know why god judges you when you talk about certain people even in the secret it's not that god is wicked that track record is a voice in the spirit are we together now ah what is there with papa deboe what is there all these men jare there's nothing special and that track record like the blood of abel cries to heaven lord someone is mocking your anointed they mocked the prophet and said you bald-headed man look small children was god so unmerciful she bears came out and devoured the children he suffered no man to do them wrong yea he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm but there is a track record Kononia, we are going to pray please help that lady listen some of you right now you are in the black book of your entire family you are wondering why do they all hate me what wrong have i done god has exposed your weaknesses and your flaws before everybody that's the same way he will expose your glory too he won't just expose your weakness and leave you everybody saw you without results i'm proud of everything in my life today it's one of the reasons why people believe what god has done if I came from another city into Zaria, people may probably think uh, everything God did, he did in this city. It was in the presence of all and sundry. And I give him all the praise. Please hear me. Don't cry just because the landlord is chasing you out of the house. You trusted God. Don't worry. You may endure the shame, but the day you will still come to that same place and build an estate, even the most hardened unbeliever will say i know this man i know this man i know this man let me tell you something years ago people said a lot of things about me and you know i don't talk too much about all those things but some of them men in fact most of them if not all were well-meaning sincere people 
just because of how very controversial the dimensions of god in my life was you know and people said all kinds of things and sometimes those things were painful some were wrong some were insincere you know and so on and so forth people just said all kinds of things and then many years later i remember when i used to do counseling some of those same families that said very some maybe even very nasty things some of them now did not know that i was the same person they just kept hearing this person this person apostle apostle and some of those same families came for counseling i could identify them and you see them come with wine and say man of god what a privilege i've heard about you and i say please sit down sir please sit down ma sir if you know what is happening in my life and this thing is 10 years old i say so when you were shouting at me you also had problems in your life when you were acting as if nothing was wrong with you and i pray for them with all my heart and bless them and they get down on their knees i say god you <laughs> you don't have to worry and don't you be afraid joy comes in the morning Troubles they don't last always. Help me. For there's a friend in Jesus, and he will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken tonight, just lift your hands and say, Oh, I know that I can make it. No matter what comes no your life. matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. With Jesus, I can take it. With Jesus, I can take it. With Him, I know I can stand. No matter what may come my way. listen to me can anything good come out of your life yes sir apostle you don't know what i've done with my life can anything good come out yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir can anything good come out can god change my financial life i know you are crying now there's no food to eat don't give up it looks like god is not with you hear me koinonia it is the betting of glory there is a relationship between death and glory why did god allow this pain this shame happen it is the birthing of glory the bible says hear me it says for our light afflictions which walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory our light afflictions which is but for a moment but for a moment listen God is producing glory out of your life are you hearing what I'm saying tonight after this program I want you to call anybody who is about to give up on God and say Lord I'm tired I've done my best I'm tired I have I have kept the faith anything you hear believe it tell the person don't give up you are at the edge it's called the track record for 10 years yes sir is the track record for 20 years as Abraham 25 years track record Moses 40 years Jesus 30 years is not unusual but as soon as Zion travails she shall put foot listen let me speak to you everything God told you you have not seen one of it come to pass he's watching you Satan is foolishly engineering men to laugh at you but the day God will turn aside and turn around your life even you you will be surprised hallelujah are we together thank God that what I could not eat yesterday because of the track record he has brought it to my table today the places I could not go yesterday listen this is why let me encourage you don't rush your life don't be ashamed of where you are now
don't be ashamed of the level of the anointing you have if all your anointing can heal his headache do it faithfully don't let people look at you and say at this level shame on you only headache no problem just go i don't know what god told you but i i know what he told me i will stay i will stay all the days of my appointed time i will stay it may be a thing of mockery listen let me tell you something brothers and sisters god will open up your nakedness in the face of everyone don't be ashamed jesus did it when you stand in that cross and people are looking at you and saying he healed others he took lazarus down don't you have the power man of god i hear you have cancer you healed people well, I mean, what kind of thing is this? Which kind of God do you serve? Let me tell you the truth. We are going to pray. Listen. There are times when until God proves men wrong, nothing about your life can say they are wrong. Everything they say looks right until God speaks. <laughs> ah, until God speaks. Until God speaks. I wish you would have an answer for every accuser. But there are times that your mouth will be shut it will cleave to the roof of your tongue you don't have any answer because everything your accusers say look right until god speaks but when god is ready to speak he will come to the grave where you are lying down and say my son it's time to arise and he will arise and bring you out while people are talking about your funeral there you stand in another body glorified and god looks at you and says this is my beloved son and he said which one i thought you died he said it's true he died but i am the resurrection and the life i can bring any family out i can bring any villager out can I, can god use this village lady this village man why will god come and give a great man to this village girl that cannot even speak english and god says young lady continue your track record i know you didn't have the privilege of doing anything just relax when the time is fully come i will lift your life like a trophy and all will see and they will give him glory listen my life is a testimony of this i know i know there are times i have not been able to eat in the night not because i didn't want to eat there was no money I still loved him while you are crying in the night tears coming out of your eyes can you still turn and say lord i count you faithful and the devil will say why don't you curse god and die and he said though he slay me though he slay me though he slay me you stand before the board spilling over for the second time and you see five carryovers and everybody looks at you and nods their head and says shame on you and you don't have anything to say because they are right and you stand before god and say lord what do i make out of my life and he says don't worry you will hold your certificate one day and say lord when when you may stand and there's no school fees your mother calling you your father calling you and you quote scripture isn't it amazing that sometimes the situations that you are a victim of is what God will send you to go and liberate others in while you are still suffering from it you are suffering from the pain no child and then God will make people to anoint you and and I mean to instruct instruct you to go for a meeting and somebody will say please can you pray for barren women and you stand there looking like a fool and God will say do it and he said lord what testimony do i give i don't have any result in my life and he says let me be your result you may not have anything and you say well i want to pray for all the barren women and you may almost hear the voice of sarcasm where is your own child what authorized you to stand and you say lord it is true i do not stand in my own righteousness but i stand by the grace of god and while you are praying others are laughing at you to your face but an innocent woman will be on her knees lifting her hands and say i know he may not have a child but i lift my hands and after nine months she returns to you and says i was pregnant and say god this is unfair you left me like this it happened to abraham 
Abraham said, God, what is this? Stop telling me about these things. I am childless. My servants have children. They are just respecting me for respect's sake. When will I have my own child? Okay, use, here is, here is one of my servants. Let him have a child. And God said, no, your own child. Don't be ashamed, brothers and sisters. Let me tell you. Life can be painful, but you are creating a track record. After tonight's meeting, call your father, call your mother. Say, I now know why we are crying. It's because we are following the path of greatness. It's because my life is not ordinary. I now see why no man has come to me to ask me out. I thought it was something wrong. But God, you have been testing. I watch people that have raised getting married. And me, no man is coming. Lord, I now know that it's because of the anointing upon my life. It's because of the generations that will come from me. And you find reasons to be happy even when there is no reason. We are going to pray. Are you ready to pray? Just three minutes. Lord, the grace to stay until the track record is established. Lift your voice and pray. Maybe painful, but I receive the grace. Let the mockers mock. Let the scorners scorn. Let the naysayers continue to speak. Let the pronunciators, let them talk, let everybody speak. But I make up my mind. I'm going to stay all the days of my appointed time I stay. Your word will try me as gold. And I will come out as a trophy, a royal diadem. A message to the nations that you are still the lifter of men. That you are still the lifter of men. Pray tonight, Koinonia. I may be at the cave of Adulam but in the name of Jesus I stay faithful even in tears I stay faithful even in imminent defeat I stay faithful in the midst of mockery in the midst of trials in the midst of approving stay faithful stay faithful stay faithful Stay faithful. We're rounding up. Hallelujah. We're going to sing that song. Thou, O Lord. Yes. No. The glory and the lifter of my head. I just want to sing it before we end this service. But thou, O Lord, had a shield for me. My glory and the lifter of my head. But thou, o Lord, had a shield for me. My glory and the lifter of my head. Say after me in the name of Jesus everything in my life that represents shame that represents pain will become my glory tomorrow say it again everything in my life that represents pain that represents shame will become my glory tomorrow i receive grace to endure I receive grace to stay. I receive grace to continue. I receive grace to not allow the mockery, the scornings, the naysayings detract me. I receive grace to stay until greatness comes. Pray that prayer. That's our last prayer tonight. Lord, I receive grace. Brothers and sisters, weeping will not happen forever. You will not continue to cry forever. I assure you, the moment of joy is coming. The season of glory is coming. The season of beauty, beauty for ashes, beauty for ashes. 
a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness everything you have gone through today will produce glory in your life everything you have gone through today is for the testimony of his name hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord father tonight we ask you for wisdom in the name of jesus christ we ask you for insight in the name of jesus we cry that our hearts be inclined to understand your ways and we truly pray that you will lift us in the name of Jesus, take us to new heights and new dimensions. Amen and amen. Please greet someone by your left and right and be seated. Very interesting um, teaching that we've been on. We started last week and I have been very humbled, honestly speaking, at the degree of impact and transformation that this has brought particularly I prepare seriously for every teaching that we bring here but sometimes God moves upon I would say the least likely teachings and really really impact the lives of people this is one of such and um, I have received so many text messages from the part one it ministered to so many people it ministered comfort it ministered grace and it refired the passions of people again and what a joy hallelujah let's start tonight with Psalm 75 we're looking at verse 6 and 7 Psalm 75 verse 6 and 7 thank you Jesus Psalm 75 6 and 7 The Bible says, For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. So the subject, a change of state, and is attempting to identify where these possibilities come from. So we are not in doubt that promotion and lifting of all sorts is a possibility that exists in the dealings of God with men. But the question is where it comes from. And let's go back to verse 6 the Bible says that promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south verse 7 it says but God is the judge he put it down one and set it up another God it is within his power as the judge of the earth to weigh the hearts of men with respect to his agenda and find out those who are irrelevant to his dealings is within his power to put them down and the space that that demotion is create has created the bible says he can lift up another and set him up may that person be you in the name of jesus christ let's look at one more scripture first samuel chapter 2 first samuel chapter 2 we'll read from 6 to 10 the lord kill it very bad news the Lord killeth and make it alive it's interesting the Bible doesn't tell us what he can kill if you're on his side it's certainly not you but the, it's, it's a fact that the Lord killeth that means there are things it's okay for some things to die such as the diseases that plague some of these our precious ladies the Lord killeth and the Lord maketh alive listen it says he bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up the next verse is very scary the Lord maketh poor and maketh rich if you are in doubt of this read Matthew 25 and find out what happened to the man with one talent to lift them out of the dunghill is enough testimony but the bible says he relocates them to sit among princes he says for the pillars of the earth are the lords and he had set the world upon them let's read to verse 10 he will keep the feet of his saints and the wicked shall be silent in darkness 
it says for by strength shall no man prevail verse 10 the adversaries of the lord shall be broken to pieces it says out of heaven shall he thunder upon them the lord shall judge the ends of the earth and he shall give strength unto his king this is the part i like and exalt the horn of his anointed god is the doer of all these things the bible says that god can throw men down and he can lift men up are we together that he can pick the poor from the dunghill and set them to sit with the princes we consider to seek to make god real to you you will never be great god's way if god is still a stranger it's not enough to know his principles the starting point of a man's work with god is an encounter with his person not his principles his person are we together you can know all the principles but you need to know the person because your conviction should first be upon the integrity of a person not just principles i believe in principles principles are important but it is the reality of a person that strengthens your convictions over the principles he has set so that the journey of faith is the journey that leads you to a point where you know god experientially and your conviction about him and the integrity of his word builds to the level that can guarantee you lifting and then the second um, part that we considered is creating a track record many of us may need to listen to last week's message again and again you may think you understood what i said a track record is very very important when you want to employ a driver to drive your children or your wife or your husband usually you will say someone who has five years experience is that true now do you know that honestly someone can be diligent in one month and learn how to drive do you believe that can happen but will you still allow that person to drive your children this is the hardest part listen carefully this is the hardest part in the journey to greatness because a track record is a compendium of your consistency consistency in trusting god consistency in in applying the principles that have been taught that you have learned consistency in your endurance 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 the bible says to endure hardship like a faithful soldier um i was giving an example of someone who would want to employ a driver to drive your children or whatever it is usually you would require that that person would have spent at least four or five years doing that why um, do you make that kind of requirement the reason is because you believe that over that five years he's made mistakes and learned from them are we together that lots of other things have happened around and that he has gained experience enough most people want to enter realms of financial prosperity listen carefully realms of the anointing and they do not have a track record of faithfulness they do not have a track record of submission they do not have a track record of prayer they do not have a track record of the study of the word they do not have a track record of discipline and diligence greatness will never happen to a man who ignores the power of a track record as a man of god nobody will listen to you just because you are anointed there must be a track record someone in your history must be able to recommend the hand of god upon your life that has been sustained for many years there has to be someone in your life who can say i know pastor alpha i know pastor Ejimi. he has been this way consistent nobody will become loyal to you just because you think you have something to offer and this applies also in business that means that even your failure is part of the reason why you will succeed you see that your failure will justify your success in the future when you come before people and you tell them i have failed before they will trust you when you come before people and say i have never failed they are afraid of your result failure stabilizes success a man of god who has never failed will seldom appreciate 
the disciplines and all the constraints that come with ministry the way many people talk is a sign that they've not had a balanced growth they have not failed they've never known what it means or what it meant to be in a situation of embarrassment of chaos of failure and and i don't believe that god causes failure are we together but that the system of growth with respect to our human nature believe me brothers and sisters is such that you must taste of failure not as a person as an event before you truly become successful are we together now we we have let me use you we have a very wrong mindset especially in the body of christ i'm a very positive person i am a man of faith but most times when we watch people as they seek to build a track record and we see their failures their imperfections their limitations most times we create a system of antagonism around their failure did you hear god are you sure you had god for that ministry why are you failing are you sure you heard god for that business why are you failing are you sure you heard god for that relationship or that whatever it is we have to be careful to give people a chance to fail honorably are we together we have to be very careful to give people a chance to fail let the brother go for the meeting and pray for the sick and then they are not healed that experience will help him to value results the day he sees a man of god who says in jesus name and something happens he will not generalize that result are we together allow the person to hold the business seminar and only five people come when he was expecting one thousand that experience is useful for his future don't sympathize with people too much to rob them from having a track record some of you are always giving people harvest even though they are not sowing seeds and so they, they you have robbed them of an opportunity to see the necessity of seed time so every time you are talking about seed time and harvest i'm not just talking of money are we together they don't pray if they are in trouble you pray for them so they don't see a need to build a personal intercessory ministry are we together they don't give when they are broke they come to you and you give them a harvest for a seed that has not no i'm not saying you shouldn't help people but if you really want people to be great allow failure and pain to teach them money is not the only thing you give you can give prayers you can give support there are times you don't stop the fire the fire purifies it will not burn the people everybody say a track record very very important there are times that you will want to pray for someone and god will prohibit you not because god does not want that person blessed god will tell that person this time around it is you i want you to taste of how it feels to spend five hours in the night when others are sleeping you always say pray for me and snore your way and then god wakes you up and say no you are praying for yourself today and after 30 minutes you want to sleep another alert with a bad news enters that forces you to be awake and you stretch and somewhere along your three and a half hours an anointing comes upon your life now one day you'll be able to tell people i was like this you see let me tell you when i look at people the basis of my respect for them is not have things be oh it's been rosy right from when we started in fact we started ministry three days we now have a music director we have choir the man laughs at you he knows that god is just comforting you before the real training starts he says you will never come and preach in his church it's not that foolish but you've been under the bridge god told you to travel somewhere you did not know assassins pursued you an angel appeared to help you he says you are a man of god you have gone through several things enough let me tell you this listen to my message knowing god experientially challenges are the valid ways to reveal god in your life you will never truly understand god until challenges reveal him to you god is a provider that only sounds like a story until you really are in a state that requires provision as a matter of life and death something about that dimension of god will be so revealed to you that even after that experience you will never go down again are we together everyone say a track record a track record is very important every ministry has a track record 
every great business has a track record there are certain informations that are captured in your track record your failures your tears your mistakes are we together your ignorance your endurance your passion for pursuit the pursuit of mentorship your passion for the pursuit of information all these things are part of the track record let me tell you your track record has value everything in your life will bless you tomorrow now when you pass through this season and then i discuss the next point i'm about to talk about you will see why the bible says for we know that all things everybody say all things for we know that all things work together for them that love the lord and for them who are the called according to his purpose all things all things the day you didn't eat in the night all things are we together the mistakes the failures and everything they invited you for a program and nobody was saved nobody was healed all things that embarrassment all things the extra year all things the shame and the pain the five years before admission all things the seven relationships that didn't work that made you look like the worst sinner on earth all things the bible says in the economy of god nothing is wasted he said even the fragments gather them that nothing be wasted even the fragments gather them they will be useful are we together when you eat food and the crumbs pour on the ground you don't gather them to save them you gather them to throw them but in god's economy it says keep them they are still useful so i i am i am by this review encouraging you to be proud of your pain don't hide it we live in a in a in a lying community of believers who and especially we men of god who always want to make it look like it was rosy every word they gave was accurate everything they said was right everybody they prayed for was healed it's not true and as a man of god of course doesn't mean you, you be as sincere as you can with the people of god it helps them to see the excellency of the power of god upon your humanity don't act in a way that discourages their journey let them know you cried the bible records the crying of jesus why didn't he jump it and just say the messiah he healed the bible says jesus was hungry he went to eat maize on sunday people tried to harass him and so on and so forth jesus was angry he went to a tree hungry demanding food jesus wept at funerals are we together jesus almost gave up the bible captures all of these things so that when he says we do not have a high priest who has not been touched let me tell you i hope you know jesus had to be a man to be qualified to be the head of the church because when the father looks at a man of god who has not prayed for one week jesus will say i've been there when i became a man and i took on the form of mortality i felt the pain what that man is going through i have a i have a record of that experience in my person and so he makes intercession on ground of that track record the reason why many people are not forgiving and never give people a chance is they are too innocent to be great the reality when i say they are too innocent what i mean is that their lives they've not been exposed to the reality of living so you can see a man with his wife and two children just crying i say what is, how can they, this man is such an irresponsible man what is he doing and the man is doing his best you don't have any child all your money came from one uncle and all of that and then one day your uncle say i will no longer take care of you and that's when you will know that your prayer that you thought was working was never working it was somebody's harvest that was making you think i pray once and the heaven hears you will now review what you have been doing and find out that you've been wrong for five years it's just that the mercy of god kept bringing somebody's harvest and so it makes you impatient at others this track record let me tell you will give you compassion is one of the things a track record does because you will have to face the reality of your humanity the best of you will still stand not qualified for the level you desire 
so when you get there you can look back at people and say pastor what did you say and the pastor will say we we have bills right now and you don't look at him and say where is your faith shame on you did you listen to my message faith for exploits you mean at this you have not been following me no the moment the pastor talks and he's crying you will remember your 10 years ago and fetch a story from that 10 years ago shame on you as a man of god if you do not have a story to help somebody rise if you don't have a story you are not great great men are great by their stories there will always be something they will tell you are we together yes someone asked me one day and said um have you ever prayed and it looked like god did not answer i said don't be carried away by the fact that i'll just say there's somebody outside and someone is shaking yeah i prayed for many months under a supposed close heaven to the point that i didn't know whether it was demonic or me no most people would lie to you that no no you will pray and pray and pray and pray and you no know, people say i prayed and i had peace i there were times i prayed i didn't have peace i didn't even know whether the prayer was answered or not it's the truth it's a track record that's why today i can know when prayer is answered because i i have experienced the confusion around answered prayer or otherwise god will never trust you with men if you have not been touched by the feelings of their infirmities and let me teach you something especially greatness in ministry let me tell you god will sample the experiences of the people you will be ministering to and force you to be a partaker of those experiences are we together you are called into the healing ministry you will find out that largely satan will attack you and god will use that experience to help you i have been sick I've had an embarrassing infirmity so when somebody says i have a breast lump or i have this for other people you are laughing but for me i move with compassion because every testimony reminds me of myself not my neighbor myself oh i stood here and god gave me a miracle a lot of five thousand and somebody's love is a five thousand and you came to disgrace yourself here that's because when your parents don't have money they give you fifty thousand and apologize to you for it whereas somebody was sent with 1000 naira and gideon's international bible the god that kept me let him keep you and the next time the mother saw that person was graduation if you ever tell that person god is not faithful he will look at you and laugh and say come and look at my life i'm a living episode not just this god used my life to write something that is scripture for men you can look at me and read A track record many of us have been afraid of creating a track record a track record of discipline a track record of diligence jesus wept there are times man of god you will go behind that tree and go and begin to cry and say lord is this how the ministry will be and for the first time you will really hear god that's when you will know that most of the things you have been hearing is your mind from that day you will mark how that hearing came and that's what you will begin to look for and you will build a very fiery prophetic ministry based on the hearing that came from you your pain edited every every haziness around your seeing and hearing and brought god's voice to you are we together you need a track record in your life god will not bring one thousand members to you just because you believe you are called now the challenge with many people is we want to inherit track records you can leverage on a man's credibility but a track record cannot be inherited it is created from your daily walk with god daily walk you want to crash and crime scriptures in one month whereas someone has had a track record of many years of consistent work with god and you just crime scriptures using a software online for one month and believe that just because you are quoting it you have the same result no that person was forced to learn that scripture not to do a competition but to recite it and force pain out of his life 
I was told about a man of God who was diagnosed of cancer. And that man of God, the same way you take drugs, every three, three or six, six hours, he had scriptures. He, he lived literally on those scriptures. The same way you have three, three hours interval to religiously take drugs. He began to engage that even as he was treating himself medically. And now he's completely cancer free. For that man, when the Bible says, Thy word have I hidden in your heart. It's not just the issue of sin alone. I have hidden it so that I will live. You know, when people sing and say, I have seen the Lord, to me, it is never a special number. The song is very personal for me because I have truly seen the Lord. Someone is just crying and say, well, I have seen the Lord. He doesn't even know. He, his mind is blank because there's nothing to relate with. A track record will do many things in your life. A track record will bring the strength of God to your weakness. Your, a track record will force you to need God. Because let me tell you, man is a proud entity. Fallen man is proud. It will take a track record to break your stony heart so that you can willfully allow God to come to a point where you say, Lord, this is no longer about my degree. If you were told that five years ago, you would argue and say, I'm smart. So God says, okay, you go ahead. And with the degree, you move from one place to the other one day in that pain you open to the scripture that says the race is not to the swift that day now is not a preacher sermon a track record has forced light out of that and you will kneel down and say lord i know that i did well in school but i lift up my degree and i hand over to you and in one week you will get a job that all your 10 years is amazing that when the purpose of your track record has been established nothing stops your greatness that's the reason why what I'm teaching you tonight is very important. You will listen to me. If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hands, if it's not by your spirit, don't let me have it. For everything I need is in you. If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hand, if it's not by your spirit, don't let me have it. The nation of Israel needed that experience of the wilderness to appreciate the deliverance of God. When they saw God deliver them, that's why till today in Israel, even those who are not born again respect God. They don't believe in Him, but they respect God. Every time they pass and they see all of those historical monuments, it reminds them, ah, God. You need it. You don't just get compassion by saying, Kai, I am merciful. No. no. Something must happen in your life. And then the day you see someone with that experience, you can come and hold the person. Although the person is having body odor, you will remember that something like that happened to me and they ran away from me. And all of a sudden, I've shared with you my testimony when I, I used to have a fungal infection and you know it was terrible the students used to run away from me if 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 i bought bonds or something i would only pay for it and they would pick it if i touched it so when you see me jump at our children and love people and say how are you have you eaten you would think ah this guy is kind pain created kindness i understand rejection firsthand it's not some some american movie that taught me rejection I know what it means to be alone. It's the reason why the Holy Spirit means life to me. Because he was the only person who didn't run away. Ah, you are my everything. My destiny. You are my everything. 
my destiny I love you I need you I love you I need you you are my everything my destiny you see when the Bible says woe unto him that puts his strength in a man for as long as life keeps pampering you you won't get that revelation until everybody is calling you king of kings then one day people look at you in the pit and say crucify him and you look at him and you say were you not my classmate he said yes crucify him believing you will never come back to life the day you come back to life you will believe once and for all so if people look at you and say emoji the greatest man in the world you your pain will give you wisdom you have learned by experience that men are like a candle that can shine bright now and off the next moment there are many of us that the stability in our lives will not come from preaching it will come from that furnace of affliction that a track record creates the fullness of affliction that comes through the track record can impart humility on your life you see this pride that we all do eh, is not something that lives naturally something must happen in your life so that your strength fails before your eyes nobody will need to tell you in all your ways acknowledge him it's easy to say god you are the doer but the reality is that you are still proud of everything you are doing it's difficult to have results and credit it to god it's not natural there must be something you pass through that will give you that message i want to ask you a question what have you gone through that has revealed god enough and built your conviction every name that god is called in the bible came as a result of a challenge that necessitated that dimension of God to be revealed what name has your own experience given God that a generation can learn because of you a name that is not necessarily in scripture but the name is a personal name you have given God because of what you have gone through for the things you have done and the battle you have won only you are worthy of my name hallelujah let's deal with the third point i want us to pray write this down the pain obtained from the place of failure will preserve you when you are successful the pain that you obtain during your periods of failure will preserve you when you become successful it is true let me tell you brothers and sisters success can make men worship you the archives of your pain can be a preacher and an advisor to you when you become successful it's your pain that will remind you you are human be careful are we good hebrews chapter 6 verse 15 we're discussing the harvest now the third part is the harvest the first is the journey of faith then the track record and when you pass through this painful and most discomforting season then you are ready for the harvest hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15 read with me please it's projected one to read and so speaking of abraham after he had patiently endured did what obtained the promise and abraham after he had created a track record for 25 years that lord i still trust you obtained the promise like god said he did but not before a track record there is a season in the life of any and every man called the season of appearing is based on the law of time and chance the bible says time and chance happeneth to them all you don't have to be born again the law of time and chance is like gravity the law of time and chance is like breathing 
every human being that comes to this earth is entitled to the ability to breathe you don't have to be born again and then oxygen now begins to come that's how this law is time and chance happeneth to them all listen listen it is dangerous to launch yourself before your season of appearing there is something in the life of every man called the season of appearing when your profiting now becomes evident to all as a businessman as a preacher as a student as a family man as a career person as a leader the season of of your training and the track record that you create can be so painful sometimes it looks like your season of appearing will never come but i have good news for you tonight believe me according to the law of time and chance your season of appearing is coming when you look at a wall clock and it's two o'clock very soon it will be 12 o'clock but with respect to two o'clock it looks far but just be patient one second one second before you know it is four o'clock and 12 o'clock is warming up because it means that my own turn is coming i have taught you listen to my message activating seasons of favor you don't sit down and be dreaming of breakthrough you prepare for them because they will come the season of appearing will always come when you mess it up then like the hands of a clock it will go down again and sometimes before it comes your lifetime may not give that allowance again the season of appearing mark chapter 4 we'll read from verse 26 to 29 mark chapter 4 26 to 29 and he said this is jesus now so is the kingdom of god as if a man should cast what talk to me please should cast seed into the ground 27 and should sleep uh-huh you see time there and rise night and day doesn't tell us how long but night and day and the seed should begin to spring and grow up and he knoweth not how 28 let's see how the tree grows it says for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself first the blade then the air after that the full corn in the air he's teaching us how growth happens in the kingdom that genuine growth starts first with the blade and evidence are we together elijah knew this and when he was praying he told the servant go and keep checking the moment the servant saw the cloud like a man's fist he knew that the result was already on it he didn't say keep watching as the cloud expands he said quickly start preparing because if i can see the blade then the air is on the way if i can see the air then the full corn is on the way everybody say the harvest most people because of our obsession for results we do not even know how to discern when the harvest begins let me tell you this if you want to see a harvest and you want to reap the harvest there is a key that i want to teach you now are you ready it's called the mystery of joy joy the bible says he that sows in tears it didn't say with reap with joy will reap in joy joy the atmosphere that causes harvests to mature and make sure that you reap from it joy the moment you begin to see the finger of god no matter how small it is an indication that the season of harvest is already unfolding after five months of loneliness in the room all of a sudden one fellowship of four people just come and approach you and say to sin um will you mind coming to take 10 minutes praise and worship and tosin is standing he's looking at a stadium and because of that he ignores the blade that is already coming out and you use your lack of joy to kill that seed are we together now all of a sudden something happens you have prayed for five months no favor someone looks at you and says just to bless you 
and you see 100 naira you suffer and write down all the units and load star 555 and load everything smiling thinking is 1000 and then you see 100 and amen you just destroy that blade there is what you do with the blade to make it an ear there is what you do with the air to make it a full harvest this is what i'm teaching you let me tell you something brothers and sisters for as long as you are crying the night remains with you it is not the morning that makes you smile it is joy that turns night to morning it's not that you keep crying and then all of a sudden when morning comes no you begin to make it happen so this gentleman goes four people and you lead praise and worship for 10 minutes and afterwards they just look at you and carry a bottle of malt and say hey, tosin sorry oh, this is small but he just shakes your hand like he's bribing you he drops everything let me tell you what a wise person would do he will go back and check the vision where god said you will be a worshiper taking my healing power to the nations you open that notebook and open it and say lord i may not see this now but i'm already seeing you arise and therefore if i saw the blade then i will see the ear and the full grown corn you begin to engage joy the mystery of joy are you seeing that yes all of a sudden you did not have rent and they were to throw you out and you said oh god so this is how and the landlord comes and says okay i give you two weeks and he said lord shame on you that's all you can do to add two weeks a wise person will go back and say lord it looks small but not to me i see that it has to have been your hand ah believers are cheated because we do not understand the systems of the kingdom how many grumbling pastors remain as 10 members for five years because they do not know how to multiply things in the kingdom and they carry their anger and yell it at the 10 members you would think they are preaching in a stadium shouting in annoyance you count the offering and everything is 150 naira and you just say what will i do with 150 naira please hey, Jimmy, look at this and god says this attitude of cynicism you disqualify yourself from growth but someone will go with the wife and say lord you called us into ministry we are doing the best this is 150 naira can't pay the bills but lord we are rejoicing before you we rejoice forevermore because we know that the god who gave 150 can give 150 million and so we rejoice are we together and while you do that all of a sudden one day somebody will come into the church and sit down and just be blessed you will never know he's a big man and one day he will tell you the church he left to come to your church and even you you'll be flattered you'll be like sir what 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 happened there say nothing god just told me to come and fellowship with you sir we are seven people i hope you know this is not a unit this is the whole church he says yes i want to stay and he will attract his seven members in the family and come and one day you'll be doing your thanksgiving and he will talk and all his business partners will come and in one year that church multiplies and they will ask you man of god how did you do it will you lie that you don't know what you will say is god but the truth is there is a story there is a story it is that story that will help someone else the purpose of the furnace of affliction and the purpose of going through a season of track record is so that you can lift others in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed not in thee shall you alone be blessed if your blessing does not affect those around you you are not blessed your blessing is not just your money your blessing is a, an outpouring of your wisdom to other people it's amazing how people come and cry to me and talk about things and and i just look at them and i feel so sad for them and i'm grateful i went through what they are crying about so that i would have something to tell them say my harvest is coming it will never come as a full-blown harvest listen 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 ladies and gentlemen learn this learn this i believe in favor i believe in breakthrough but you must learn to acknowledge the slightest move of god in your life that indicates the arrival of a harvest i remember one of my dear friends among all of us you know friends and brothers together i remember one time when um you know we used to the, the ministry used to meet in the campus their abu campus one day i was hugging someone 
and when i hugged the person i smiled and i told the person the name of his perfume and he was surprised i used it for many you know there are some perfumes that oh lord have mercy oh lord have mercy you don't know whether let me let me keep quiet let me not say anything because some of you you go and throw it use it use it when anybody laughs just say it's my track record it's my track record it's my track record hallelujah it's my track record don't be afraid years ago i was passing that joint where that mama makes akara that bend to charity and faith you know many of you think that we don't know all those places though you, you must be joking you must be joking a lot are we together and i don't know what took me to pass around that place and i saw some koinonia people and you know they were they were fairly men of god god was and ah that that thing they felt embarrassed in my mind i said look at you people are not wise just because you are sitting down under that smoke Abba. when you don't have a story of pain you will feel guilty for being great you will sit down and feel like you scammed people because someone will come to you and say what do i do when it looks like god does not hear me and say just go and have faith and feel so bad you know you didn't bless the person but you can tell the person sit down get a paper and a pen let me tell you this this is what to do every time you feel like god is not answering you praise the lord so the bible says that we should not be weary the word weary is not a bad word it's just a human word weariness is something that is part of humans are we together the, the bible says hope deferred have you read that scripture before hope deferred can make the heart weary in other words if i continue to expect expect a result expect a result expect a result the inability to obtain that result especially within my timing can sap away my energy are we together and then the bible comforts us and tells us that we should not be weary provided what we are doing is consistent with the patterns of god you are building a track record and he says for we will reap in due season if that's the condition we faint not that means man of god you will not continue to pastor two members forever a day will come there will be an avalanche of open heavens but that your pastoring members imagine if bishop oyedeko never had limitation in church growth he would never have understood the principle but for a long time he was taunted and that taunted nature made them to call a fast before god it was whilst the fast was going the lord showed him that there are forces called the gates of hell that can stop the church from growing are we together he took authority over it and think of the millions of people think of david yongi cho who came up with the system of home cell and the rest are we together it was out of his pain think of all the people who came up with experiences today that have opened the body of christ to dimensions of christ some of them it was out of their pain so let us not be weary i made up my mind and i still do listen that as far as my destiny is concerned is satan that will be tired no i have lost the ability to give up if it is if it was declared by god then i'm getting there are we together can someone join me in that prophecy tonight that as far as god declared that i'm taking the gospel to the nations then no power no charm no enchantment no as far as god told you that you will you will you will you will rise to the highest point possible then no challenge over your life your business your career should put you down listen i'm teaching you how to trivialize your current predicament and lift up your eyes he told abraham from where thou art lift up your eyes you don't move forward looking down you lift up your eyes you lift up your eyes you lift up your eyes i know what god told me 
in the name of jesus i will be a kingdom financier all i have is one cup of gary and one sugar but lord i give you praise i will continue to give i will continue to tithe every time i hear that there is a church doing something even if it is hundred naira i will go and drop it as kingdom financing seed and someone will say hundred naira your money does not count god is watching a track record a day will come when you will single-handedly build a church for god and you will remember and smile and say once upon a time i used to give hundred naira are we together a track record let's look at the life of one person and then we'll pray because god has vowed to lift us and he surely will lift us esther chapter 6 we are reading the first 11 verses now the bible talks about how many of us love the book of esther very powerful book there was no mention of a man of god in that book yet it was everything kingdom a type of christ and the church and how god lifts people the entire book of esther is one of the classic signs of how god lifts people how god lifted a village girl how god brought down another arrogant one how god took mordecai let's look at mordecai's life the bible says once upon a time men and women conspired to hurt the king and mordecai detected it and mordecai did something that the bible calls well doing but he was not rewarded i hope you know that he had the right to be offended be careful with offense it can rob you of your harvest imagine if mordecai saw the king riding on his chariots he would sit there and be angry and see her man and say her man is occupying my position O king you would have been a dead man right now 127 provinces would have become shambles but for my well-doing but he remained there and continued to minister even when esther came he gave her the advice you know do this do that and then she went into the temple became queen and esther herself was almost forgetting about him look at the kind of pain don't just read that mordecai mordecai was a man who was so hot and embittered he helped a lady rise to become the king's wife and mordecai would expect that in two weeks they would wipe his tears but just like joseph he needed to have a track record are you seeing the consistency in how people are lifted the wine presser was helped by joseph but he forgot about him for two extra years mordecai helped esther hadassah to become queen and she left him there and she became almost unconcerned about the destiny of the jews and then when it was time for the harvest of mordecai let's see how it happened on that night could not the king sleep when men stop sleeping it may not be demonic it may be that god is walking god is working to make sure someone's season of harvest comes he says on that night could not the king sleep and he commanded to bring the book of the records of the chronicles that they were that they were read from before the king we're reading to verse 11 and it was found written brothers and sisters the bible says it was a chronicle of the good works of men was it only mordecai's record that was there but when it is your season of lifting for reasons that don't make sense god will arrange things to make sure you are, you rise it says that mordecai had told of bigthana and teresh two of the king's chamberlains the keepers of the door who sought to lay hands on king ahasuerus verse 3 and the king said what honor and dignity had been done to mordecai for this do you know that if mordecai were lifted two years earlier maybe her man would not die so god had to arrange it in a way that the victory would have to be total are we together and the bible says then the king's servant that ministered to him said there is nothing done do you know the king would have the king's servant would have lied and said they clapped for him and that would have been all look at all the forces working together what honor and dignity had been done for this man and the king said who is in the court hallelujah look at how god rubbishes enemies now her man was coming to the outer court a man was outside oh but the grace to lift a man forced an enemy to enter the court he says to speak unto the king 
to hang Mordecai. Are you seeing? Her man was planning that if the king rests small, I will finally tell him today it's time to hang that guy. Whereas God was using him like the princes of this world were used by God to perfect the plan of salvation. Are you seeing that now? And the Bible says to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared. Her man had prepared how Mordecai would die. Verse 5. And the king's servant said to him, Behold, her man standeth in the court. And the king said, Let him come in. 6. So Haman came in, and the king said unto him, What shall be done unto the man whom the king delighted to honor? Now Haman thought in his heart, To whom would the king delight to do honor more than myself? Everybody say pride. Shout it. The Bible in the scripture that we read, it says God can bring down others, such as Haman. And Haman answered the king, for the man whom the king delighted to honor, comma, next verse. He says, let the royal apparel be brought which the king used to wear. And the horse that the king rided upon. And the crown royal which is set upon his head. Verse 9. And let this apparel and horse be delivered to the hand of one who the king's most noble princes to one of the king's most noble princes that they may array the man without whom the king delighted to honor and bring him on horseback through the street of the city and proclaim before him thus shall it be done to the man in whom the king delighted to honor ladies and gentlemen welcome to how god lifts men next verse the king said to haman make haste and take the apparel and the cause say make haste quickly make haste when it comes to the appearance it's not slow it the blade may be slow the ear may be slow but when the full-blown harvest is coming five minutes can be too much five minutes joseph started seeing the blade in the house of potiphar but it looked like the blade everything was aborted and it went down again and he started seeing the ear in the prison there because he was made the head over them but when the full-blown harvest would come in moments i perceive in my spirit someone has seen please help those outside now someone has seen the blade you probably started seeing the blade five years ago probably you have even seen the air but i perceive in my spirit that since god revealed this someone is about to enter a strange season the bible says and the king said to her man listen make haste i tell you i sense the spirit of prophecy and take the apparel and the horse listen as thou hast said and do even so to mordecai hold on the jew the jew the jew the disadvantaged the slave i am aware he's a jew by being a jew he shouldn't even have anything he should be seated outside but mordecai the jew that sister the poor that brother the disadvantaged don't i know it's mephibosheth he can't walk but still the favor is for him and then he says that seated at the king's gate he said let nothing fail since it is your enemy that suggested how you should be blessed let nothing fail verse 11 then took Haman he prepared a table before me in the presence in the presence then took Haman the apparel and the horse and arrayed Mordecai and brought him on horseback through the street of the city and proclaimed to him, Thus shall it be done unto the man that the king delighted to honor. The king, the king, any king can delight to honor a man. That means God can choose to love Jacob. God can choose to leave Joshua Selman. God can say, For I have chosen. And I swear by my name. Listen. Let me tell you brothers and sisters. There is nothing you can do about a man. That the king has chosen to lift. 
God can choose to lift men. They may not look like it. You will look at them and be angry because nothing around their life should warrant that level of honor. But God will say it's a choice. I am a king. I can choose to lift a man and I can make it hasty. My life is a testimony that God can choose to lift a man. God can choose to lift a ministry. God can choose to lift a business. Brothers and sisters, God can look at your lineage, your village, and say what has been done to this poor family that even in their poverty, they kept loving the Lord. And they said, Lord, seven ladies in that family, they are not married. He said, make haste. Create a horse, a chariot of honor. Make haste. Let five of them marry in one year. Make haste. Make haste. Make haste. That's the key word. Make haste. It is the training that takes time. The lifting is suddenly. Now, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, after 40 days of waiting, suddenly, shagata bakatoya, suddenly, 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 Joshua Selman changes. Listen, the Bible says, hear me. The Bible talks about the coming of Christ. It says, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. In a moment, my brother, my sister, in a moment that you are drinking Gary today, God will not ask you what business idea do you have. There is a name God is called, the lifter, the lifter, the lifter of men, the lifter of men. Hallelujah. The lifter of men. When God wants to lift you back, let me tell you, you will add the, if even all the laws you are practicing, they won't add up. They won't, it will be clear that this one is the finger of God. Listen, listen. When God chooses to lift you, listen, listen. I'm not teaching you cunningly devised fables. You will look left and right and your colleague is not there. You know you were not supposed to be there. Lord, what am I doing here? And God said, my choice. My choice. Listen. This series is not just about principles. I have taught you principles. I'm teaching you a prophetic dimension that God can choose to veto anything you know. Whether you know business or not. Whether you know whatever or not. God can choose to lift you from where you are and carry you up let me tell you this please hear me if you don't believe in what i'm teaching you you will never be great in this life because you see the delays that have happened in our lives require a rapid lifting to catch up if you move at the pace of men your lifetime will be too slow. That while you are in Koinonia now, God is arranging men, they are discussing you. What do we do to a man who loves God? And all of a sudden, a wealthy person who has never contacted the family from abroad will say, Combo, I have never helped this family. What needs to be done? Who is in school? And they'll say, only one lady. And he said, can, can, I, can I help her? Ebenezer, thus far has the Lord helped us. Listen, he said Uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped. God can help men. Oh. If God does not help you, you will not get a job. If God does not help you, you will move fast in this life. This our arrogance in just what we have. I have this. I read this. I know this. Thank God for them. But behold a season where God is willing and ready to lift men in a way that even the men themselves, they will tell you, look, this is, I, I don't know. Listen. This is what many people don't understand. 
and then when they see god lifting people strangely instead of them to find out what is working they can just feel oh, they are just lucky the lifting of god is not private to just some few individuals the lifting of god is a season i told you i was preparing to preach something else last week i just lay down on my pillow and all of a sudden i saw a writing the lifter of men i know listen i may not claim i know everything about god but i told you his anointing goes where his word is the moment god sends a word the anointing is there let me tell you i have prayed this prophecy upon my life like no man's business lord thank you for what you are doing yesterday my entire prayer time was god help me your help is what i need if you don't believe god can help men you will suffer oh let me tell you i don't have any uncle anywhere who will say oh you're a young man you're a ministry let's support you the lifter of men the lifter of men we are going to take 15 minutes find a corner find somewhere you, you are going to pray i want us to invoke this grace that it will land upon your life are we together in the next five to ten minutes i leave you alone with god lift your voice and blast in tongues and cry before god and say god lift me lift me i cry to you you are the lifter of men hey pata lakato shabarata hey lift me shapata kato kato labataya Zekete kata 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 barakata kata kata Zekete parakata pata Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion 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 For the time to favor her For the time to pray, pray, pray Please pray, please pray for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time. Yea, the set time. Yea, the set time. Shaka pakato kata lakata. E preketo shaparakotos. Makata parato shoto prekete. Rekete kete kete. Lord, lift me spiritually. A new dimension of the anointing. A new dimension of fire. A new operation of the gift of the spirit. A new dimension of utterance. Access to deeper revelation. The lifter of men. Arabo shabarada balakata bariada balaraba shakata kata 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 Hallelujah Hallelujah We are still praying Psalm 71 verse 21 Psalm 71 verse 21 Please let's keep praying psalm 71 i like us to read together one to read thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side listen don't just comfort me spiritually and leave me suffering financially don't just comfort me academically lord increase my greatness comfort me on every side open your mouth and pray comfort me on every side comfort me on every side increase my greatness for your glory increase my greatness increase my influence 
increase my impact increase koinonia increase the fire increase the results increase the testimonies increase the salvation thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me and comfort me Pray. Thou shall increase my greatness. Thou shall increase my greatness. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. I want you to mention the areas where you have not yet been comforted. Lord, thank you. By God's grace, my prayer life is okay. But Lord, my finances. Or by God's grace, my finances is okay. But Lord, my ministry, my life. Don't keep quiet. Open your mouth and speak to the Lord. Lord, let your comfort, let your grace. Believers, talk to the Lord. Unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Arise, O God. Arise, O God. Comfort me. Comfort me. On every side. 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 Leketesh kabarakato sabaya. Comfort me. Pray for your academics. Pray for your marriage. Pray for your fruitfulness. Pray for your finances. Pray for your ministry. Pray for your spiritual life. Comfort me, oh God. Oh God of heaven, arise. Comfort me in this season. You are the lifter of men. Shekete barakato barada baladaba. And take a take a rakato soto prakataya. Shabarakata karyana balada balada box. Hallelujah. John 17, verse 1. John 17. Please be serious. Some of us are not praying, you are just looking around. It's time to pray. We are activating this thing in our lives. John chapter 17, verse 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is what? Talk to me, please. The hour is Lord, not tomorrow. If you revealed it, then the hour has come. Father, the hour has come. Father, the hour has come. The hour for my lifting. The hour for my glorification. Lift your voice and pray. The hour has come to change my story. The hour has come for a harvest. I decree and declare the hour has come to silence the forces of darkness. The hour has come to lift me like a trophy. The hour has come for the helpers to appear. The hour has come for the good news to go far. Hallelujah. 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 He said the hour has come. Then he says glorify. Glorify now Joshua Selman. That he may bring glory to you. Listen. Listen. I want you to pray a very honest prayer. And say father honor me let your honor in this season come upon my life and let it be evident to all lift your voice don't let the devil tell you you are you are asking for nonsense everyone that asked receive it pray 
Lord, your honor, Jacob's Katabarata. I vow that you will be glorified. In lifting me, you will be glorified. Honor my family. Honor, honor my destiny. Honor my finances. Take away shame. Take away reproach. Take away shame. Take away reproach. Take away shame. Take away reproach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are praying. In the next five minutes, I'd like you to pray that every force, every power that is standing between Mordecai and the king, that Haman that is waiting at the court while God is preparing to bless you. The, listen, listen, listen. Look at this. Just when God was going to lift Mordecai, Haman too was at the court. They were all in the place. The lift and the destroyer, all in the same place. It's up to you to clear off the destroyer. Open your mouth and decree and declare. My enemies will not reach my helpers. In the name of Jesus, no evil report. The counsel of Ahitophel will not stop my lifters. I decree it. I declare it. I decree it. I declare it. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Hallelujah. 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 We are going to pray for our families. I don't know about you, but let me tell you something. Because of the times I've had to counsel people, truly speaking, personally, I'm tired of what Satan is doing in families. It's, it's too bad. Satan is corrupting the testimony of righteousness. You will hear that someone is serving God, doing well. But the devil will rubbish every other person in his family. Are you ready to pray? I'd like you to take on your priestly position and prophesy lifting to every one of your family members. Mention them by name. I prophesy lifting in the name of Jesus. Prophesy to your wife. Prophesy to your husband. Prophesy to your children. Prophesy to your siblings. Lord, take away shame. That proverb, Ichabod, let it no longer be used in my family. This proverb will no longer be used in the name of Jesus Christ. This proverb will no longer be used in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray. This proverb will no longer be used. It will no longer be Ichabod in the name of Jesus Christ. It will now be Beulah. It will be Hepzibah in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray the last prayer point and then I'll pray for you. Listen. There is a kind of anointing that can lift you above your fellows. It says, Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness, therefore God, even 
thy God, not another person's God, has anointed you, not informed you, anointed you with an oil of gladness that makes you above Shabalakatoya. Above. There is a grace that makes you above. Listen. Joseph was a slave. They bought him. In ancient times, they would pay for you. As soon as he entered Potiphar's house, there were many other slaves. They all had mothers too. But there was a grace. And they identified, even in the prison, lifted him. We are going to pray and say, Lord, the grace that makes me noticeable, the grace that stands me out. Listen, listen. Until you are noticed, not in a negative way, you can be doing good things, but the eyes that can discern you to bless you has not yet seen you. Lord, the grace that stands me out so that my helpers can see me, I cry for it to come upon me tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Let that grace come, O God. Shabakato soto bara la da ba la ba la da ba. Change my life. Change my ministry. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven, stable land, a higher place than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on high. Sing it one more time. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land Is Saul also among the prophets? When did he get there? Who lifted him? In Zaria, lifted from there, who lifted you? When I know your father is not alive, when I know your mother is not alive, who advocated for you? And you will say the lifter of men. The lifter of men. A lifter of men. I know him. I know him. I know him. Listen. Listen. You see, truly, brothers and sisters, let me tell you this. I don't mean to be boastful. But my life is a testimony that God can lift men. When you look at my life, the equations don't add up. But for God, God can come and meet you and say, Son, daughter, I have chosen. And you say, Lord, I don't qualify. 
He said, that's the point. I want to lift you. I want to lift your family. And he said, Lord, should I tell my poor mother that right now he's at home praying for 5,000 naira. And God will tell you, she will not be like that in death. God has beautified my life. God has brought me honor and glory. God has done things in my life today that no matter how silent I want to become, I am broken and forced to go down on my knees. The prayer department prayed on Tuesday and their entire prayer was for the favor of God. Listen, listen, listen. When you see God revealing something, it is because that is what he wants to do in this season. God sees my heart and God knows how I have prayed that this grace will come on everybody if possible. God can lift you. There is space for everybody. It is not God's will for one person or a few people to rise there when others still are there struggling financially, struggling in, in an area. No, no. God can lift everybody together and still be glorified. He has already captured your heart. So there is no point being afraid. The blessings will not kill you. There is nothing God has put in my life today that can take his place. So don't let anybody lie to you. Oh, I'm afraid if you rise, you will not love God. It's a lie. It is not his blessings that take his place in your life. It is carnality. Are we together? I'm praying now standing here listen are many people some of you as you are standing here you represent families that are desperately you don't need breakthrough you need lifting lifting takes you out of the realm breakthrough you are still there it's just that you prosper in that realm lifting takes you out of that realm in a way that you are looked at like the hebrew boys were lifted out of fire and you would never know they were once there like daniel was lifted out of the pit like jesus was resurrected out of the grave like joseph was taken out of the dungeon that's not breakthrough that's lifting i believe in jesus i believe in his power and I believe that in this season, that which he has shown me, it is my prayer. I can't assume everybody wants to be lifted because there are believers who are very careless. The Bible says, believe in the Lord your God. It says, so shall you be established. He said, believe in his prophets. So shall you prosper. There is a dimension of lifting. That if you open up your heart and receive brothers and sisters let me tell you my god this is no long this is not your god my god will surprise you and do something in your life i'm not asking you whether you are walking no there, there are sermons that i will ask you are you walking let me bless the work of your hands that's not what i'm doing today it has nothing to do with whether you are walking listen it has nothing to do with whether you are in school or not it has nothing to do with which village there are times that i can say oh lift your certificate i teach value i don't teach irresponsibility but this one is not just principles god has chosen it's a choice the king said what shall be done hey, Jimmy? what shall be done i look at my life today and i look at certain things god has done and i say if i walked this thing by my way for god's sake who is who is who, who dash monkey banana where will it come from only a man who has tasted of something can release something to you nobody can give what he doesn't have please hear me family of god I want you to believe in this prayer I'm about to pray. It's not by kneeling down. It's by opening your heart to believe. And say, Lord, I know there is a realm 
there is a dimension where you can lift men and if you have revealed this oh god please let it happen to me are we together i'm about to pray for you my beautifier sing that song once twice for me sir my beautifier you have taken away the shame taking away the pain you make my life so beautiful my beautifier you have taken away the taking away the my beautifier you have taken away taking away the pain make my life so beautiful my beautifier you have taken away taking away the pain make me just like you I pray for you that the God the God who met me as a total nobody and by his finger I am a testimony of the mercies of God of the grace of God I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus by the spirit of prophecy that is upon me tonight I decree and declare that the grace for sudden lifting sudden lifting the word is sudden sudden lifting in the name of jesus christ may that grace come upon you right now sudden lifting sudden lifting in ministry sudden lifting in ministry sudden lifting in business sudden lifting in your finances i command sudden lifting inexplainable lifting strange lifting in the name of jesus in your spiritual life the dimensions of anointing that you have never seen in the name of jesus as i stretch my hands may those dimensions be activated now be activated now whether it is the prophetic whether it is the apostolic whether it is the healing dimension whether it is visions whether it is dreams i command an activation of those dimensions now I pray for you the grace for speed I tell you that there is an anointing that is about to push you is a force to move you to the next seasons of your life I release that grace upon you now whether you are inside overflow one overflow two overflow three online I prophesy may that grace move you to the next dimension of your life may that grace move you to the next dimension i want to pray for supernatural finances listen There is wealth that is gotten by exchanging for value. There is wealth that is gotten by being rewarded for transforming people. 
but there is the sovereign dimension of wealth wealth by the mouth of god are we together there is do your business do whatever it is that you are doing impact lives tomorrow someone will bless you but this dimension of wealth many of you have had testimonies don't sit down and be watching people it does not discriminate it's a grace that doesn't discriminate anything i want to pray because the truth of the matter honestly for many of us here the major areas of concern is finance by the grace of god and by the the privilege of his hand i know the quality of the training that you are receiving here and i testify for many of us that we love god i'm not in doubt of your love for god i know that many of us serve god with all our heart are we together but brothers and sisters what good is it when you serve god with your whole life and you cannot pay the school fees of your children and you sit down i spoke with a dear lady who almost brought tears out of my eyes she had gotten admission five times born again wasn't living a wayward life no sleeping around no nothing five times but just because of a meager amount of a school fees nobody could help her that's how that admission kept kept going that lady her colleagues are graduates now and the lady is there and you know we in church we will look at that lady now if she goes to enter a lifestyle somewhere and starts maybe doing some things that she should not do it's easy to point fingers and say you are a stupid girl never condemn people if you cannot supply the alternative are we together when that lady spoke to me tears almost came out of my eyes i said what if this was my biological daughter five years her colleagues were now rounding up and that poor girl imagine the stigmatization on her reputation and she loves god imagine who god is to that lady she will carry five admission letters and put and read the scripture that says i was young now i am old and say god it doesn't add up and she will come to us men of god and say don't worry just focus on your spiritual life no sir no sir no sir everything but that pertains on to life and godliness not godliness alone life i know that many of us here right now is financial issues and let me tell you i will be wicked as a man of god you've heard me say this we're rounding up i have food in my house but do you a good shepherd lays down his life are we together i have a vehicle that will take me home i can put on a generator when there is no light and be worshiping god all through the night can you a good shepherd is not comfortable in his own blessing alone until you are blessed i am a failure it doesn't matter who does what if people are calling me and sending seeds into my life my account if that is not happening to you then i should not rest i don't want to make the mistake of esther she went to the palace and forgot she was once a villager and allowed the jews to be suffering and did not know that god took her there for such a time mordecai said don't you think continue to enjoy in the palace and leave us suffering don't you think that when they are done with us they will not come for you i have to pray for you i counsel people all the time after service now i'm going to be waiting for hours and hours talking to people families that have no business divorcing but the devil use financial issues some of you right now some of you may be students but you are fending for yourself and yet we have the gods to tell you don't follow any man don't follow any woman no sugar mommy no sugar daddy no sugar everything yet we don't have the grace to pray that god will open up doors for you no we must fear god we must stop misrepresenting god I will be very vocal about your welfare and let me tell you until god blesses you i will not rest 
I don't only want you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I don't just want you to have mysteries you cannot demonstrate with your life. And you keep pride in mysteries, mysteries. No. I want those who don't have jobs to have jobs. You can still serve God with a job. I want people who, I mean, there has to be an evidence. Hallelujah. There are many of our precious people now. So many weddings on the line. And I have the privilege to counsel all those people. And sometimes I look at them. And I know that they need a miracle. And they need one fast. They need the lifting of God. Imagine this, our little children right now. We have so many children in this ministry. Who love God with their heart and are passionate. But simply because in the whole family, nobody is lifted. Look how wicked Satan can be. A family of 25 people. All loving God. But there's nobody they live from hand to mouth if they eat on monday they are not sure what will come on tuesday and yet i can leave food in my house and a nice car with an with ac outside and be wearing a nice cloth and have the effrontery to forget about you i fear god more than that if it was good and god gave it to me then it's good for you too are we together if god put something in my hand and he didn't take my heart from him then he can put something in your heart. There are some of you, we cannot even come and visit you because your condition, you will get into debt to try to refresh us. And it's not good. Just because of the honor you have, you will go somewhere and borrow money just to honor the man of God. You want to go and pray, the needs arise. There are house rent issues right now. There are school fees issues right now. And then... The devil comes with a somebody with an option you would think you will not say yes until the pressure squeezes you lift your hands in the name of jesus christ my god and my king i have cried to you in the secret i pray in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god you have told me every time i pray you hear me i cry to you from the depth of my spirit lift everyone here financially in the name of jesus christ i prophesy from the depth of my spirit that the hand of god that can change someone's financial destiny overnight may that hand come upon your life in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ the lord has beautified my life i pray for you everything that looks like shame you, you, you see me you see me shedding tears My God, I pray. I pray for every single one here. Lord, it is true that you can lift men. I cry unto you, O God. I cry unto you, O God. Please lift everybody here financially in the name of Jesus. 
my altar is calling you oh god my altar is calling you oh god my altar is calling you oh god my sacrifice is calling you Oh God, take my praise. Oh God, take my praise. Hallelujah. I'm still praying. Forget about my crying. My tears are also praying for you. Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray there are spiritual dimensions that you brought me into not because of my prayer life not because of fasting your hand came upon me and you lifted me Lord I bow my knees to you now may that portal in the spirit that is opened over men in the name of jesus i stretch my hands drink of that wine drink of that wine inside overflow one overflow two overflow three online let that fire that he put upon my life let the eyes of the eagle the eyes that see she get to go soto barakato be patient we're rounding up let there be a strange lifting in your spiritual life fresh anointing to heal fresh grace to prophesy restoration of dreams visions dimensions in the spirit everyone here trusting God for the lifting in the area of job and career I cry to my God and I pray that between now and the end of May let there be a strange testimony in your life let there be a strange testimony in your life I pray for every business represented here I decree and declare whatever has kept it at the same level in the name of Jesus Christ may the God of heaven arise and grant that business supernatural speed in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for every family represented here whatever represents shame whatever represents reproach i bow my knees to my father and my god and i decree and declare may that reproach be rolled away like a curtain in the name of jesus christ i pray for all final year students and all the institutions that are writing exams we're rounding up i stretch my hands for those in probation third class two two by this grace of lifting i shoot you to a new level in the name of jesus a dimension of intelligence that you have never seen in your academics I release that grace upon you right now I pray for families where there are marital spells 
no one gets married no one gives birth shakos kabara kato embrigato sada sekete sekata sasia rakako shekekeke kos kabaria ata mans kabash kebari ko sedeliata rekes kabarokas kebarie de ko shabara I command those embargoes lifted in the name of Jesus. Father, you reveal to me, lying down in my room, the lifter of men. I have taken these two weeks to teach your people. Father, by your mercy and your grace, let there be testimonies of sudden liftings yeah. testimonies of sudden liftings in the name of jesus every ministry here that has been grounded i move you to the next dimension of impact every worker in this house i decree and declare to you this month will not end without you having strange financial testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ, whatever needs to be done to make sure you return with your testimony, brothers and sisters, I agree with my God and your God. May he make it happen for you. In the name of Jesus. Now, in just one to two minutes, I'd like you to thank God in your own way and say, Lord, I believe this has come upon me and I thank you. Thank you. You want to choose a song to sing for him? Go ahead. You want to just tell him, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just do what I'm telling you to do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know in my spirit it is done. I know when God has moved upon a people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we pray? Listen, I know our time is gone. But can we pray for Koinonia in one minute? If you love me and you love this ministry, Let's cry in one minute and say, Lord, lift us as a family. We have seen your lifting, but multiply your grace, oh God. Come on, pray, precious people. Multiply your grace. Multiply your impact. Multiply everything that can be multiplied. Multiply the miracles. Multiply the healings. Let there be multiplication. Pray. We're rounding up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. While, while I knelt down, I saw a family that is like their dad has not been working. It's almost 10 years. Almost 10 years. Their father has not been working. It won't reach two weeks. Two weeks. 14 days. From what I saw from what i saw it won't reach two weeks a strange breakthrough will come to that family strange breakthrough the lord also showed me a family that there is someone trying to go abroad go abroad and it's been very difficult very very difficult and the lord is telling me i saw like a a passport a visa being stamped and that person been released. I saw it in the vision of the Lord. Hallelujah. I also saw a woman, this is a mother, a mother that had um, this is something like a kidney problem. This is a kidney, a serious kidney problem that had eaten her up as we were praying while I was just kneeling and crying before God here. All of a sudden, it was like an angel of the Lord literally put his hand into her like a tummy and brought out something and in the name of jesus whoever that person is you are coming to testify 
hallelujah praise the lord what a powerful time now let's honor those who are about to give their lives to christ please let's there are people here hold on please no movement around it's a very serious thing to god that people be saved you have seen what the lord has done tonight please let me have your attention there are people here in the main auditorium overflow one overflow two overflow three and online you are saying apostle i need jesus in my life as a matter of urgency some of you love the lord genuinely but you need to hand over rededicate everything to him wherever you are our time is gone i'm going to count one to five you want to rededicate your life to christ you want to give your life to jesus for the first time wherever you are very quickly i want you to make your way right now come to the front quickly 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 make your way quickly come to the front let's honor them as they come someone must be bold enough to come someone must be bold enough to come don't wait for your friend god bless you people are coming koinonia you are appreciating them aside from overflow three overflow one two you can come inside quickly you can come inside join them join them very quickly please if you are coming rush rush jesus is calling you he's giving you a brand new beginning god bless you my sister god bless you my brother keep coming keep coming hallelujah i believe there are, if there are some more people if you are coming please rush quickly i want to pray now if you're coming please rush quickly don't sit down when you need to give your life to jesus hallelujah those of you in front here i salute you i want you to say after me from the depth of your heart say lord jesus say lord jesus i believe in you that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me you shed your blood for my sin those of you standing join them quickly say i believe that you are the son of god that you died for me and shed your blood tonight i hand over my life to you and i receive your life in exchange i declare that i'm a child of god a possessor of the life of god in the name of jesus father i thank you for this ones blessed people I declare that the grace that saves, the grace that keeps, I declare that that grace will be rested upon them now and forever in the name of Jesus. I commend them to the ministry of the Holy Spirit who will open up the word to you and will grant you, will give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. I declare that the experience of the ministry of the Holy Spirit becomes yours from today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Basca Nakata Branda Catecatos, Cate Branda Catapa Cotosco to break a take a legata. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.